Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want to stop tyranny? Well, so does he. Live from the Infowars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. This is the truth. I'm left hanging my head and asking why. You do such a disservice when you lie about things like this. Why would anyone, especially an African-American man, use the symbolism of a noose to make false accusations? I noticed the rope around my neck and I started screaming. How could someone look at the hatred and suffering associated with that symbol and see an opportunity to manipulate that symbol to further his own public profile? They called me There's no which way you cut it. Bogus police reports cause real harm. The fact that we have these fear mongrels. The accusations within this phony attack received national attention for weeks. If I had said it was a Muslim or a Mexican or someone black, I feel like the doubters would have supported me a lot much more. So I'm offended by what's happened and I'm also angry. Just remember that mine was reported right away. And look what has happened. This publicity stunt was a scar that Chicago didn't earn and certainly didn't deserve. So they get to go free and go about their life and possibly attack someone else? Smollett attempted to gain attention by sending a false letter that relied on racial, homophobic, and political language. Do you think there's a link between the letter and the attack? Um, And you did mention it to the police right away about the letter. When that didn't work, Smollett paid $3,500 to stage this attack and drag Chicago's reputation through the mud in the process. I will never be the man that this did not happen to. Mm. I am forever changed. And why? This stunt was orchestrated by Smollett because he was dissatisfied with his salary. If the attackers are never found, how will you be able to heal? Um, I don't know. But to put the national spotlight on Chicago for something that is both egregious and untrue is simply shameful. I still want to believe with everything that has happened that there's something called justice. February 22nd, 2019, I'm Alex Jones, your host. And I'm very honored that you've decided to jump through all the hoops and get past the censors to join us. All I ask you is you continue to spread the word about Infowars.com and Newswars.com and the live feeds as well as the videos that we chop out of the broadcast and post to Infowars.com. And you never know what's going to happen. I was uh, joking around with Gavin McGinnis last week here in studio about how I liked his open road gray, it's actually called silver belly uh, open road Stetson that LBJ wore. And so uh, one of the crew bought me one of these things. So I was wearing it around the office yesterday when I got back in and uh, threw it across the room, and it landed right on Owen Schroyer's head. But to Owen's credit, he compensated because I was about a foot off, but actually the hat began to boomerang right on time, so he moved back, and it went on his head perfectly. So most of the credit goes to Owen uh, for that incredible uh, landing. I mean, it, it, it even hit right side forward. A little bit, little bit cockeyed, but I'd still give it a hole-in-one status there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's get serious. I talk about things being Rosetta Stones or windows into things or skeleton keys. Means that they decode a lot for us. They cause the big light bulb to go off above people's heads. And the Jesse Mullet case, excuse me, Schmullet case, uh, is just absolutely disgusting, but absolutely beautiful at the same time. This is clearly a completely out of his mind Uh, virtue signaling, power tripping scumbag who thinks that we're all stupid and he projects that onto us he pulled off this cartoon caper uh, that's now spectacularly blown up at the establishment's face who doesn't want you questioning public events and tragedies and now all their fake hate crimes are on trial and their attempt to silence you has failed (laughs) yes Cobra February 22nd, 2019, on this Friday global broadcast. Feels like a Monday morning to me because I've been on quasi-vacation. That's why this Saturday, this Sunday, there won't just be the Sunday broadcast 4 to 6 p.m. that we've been doing for 11 years. 
I'll be doing all sorts of special transmissions. Robert Barnes, the amazing lawyer, an amazing orator. Ever seen anything like the guy? He can like just talk about any subject for an hour, just punch the button. He knows everything. He's going to be doing a special broadcast with me tomorrow. Times to be announced on that. Uh, very powerful first uh, podcast I did with Man Cal Muller. He didn't release it for about a week. We're going to be premiering that on the broadcast, a special broadcast. You know, I said I haven't listed a time. Let's just list a time right now. Let's say uh, 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. I'm going to come in with Barnes, and then I'm going to also air that uh, podcast. Man Cal is going to let me premiere that and a lot more. Wow. Where to start? Tucker Carlson always does a great job. But today we have a double header. Makes me like him even more. Because one of these libtards videotaped him from the studio they were in you know, via cyberspace, telling the guy to F off and ending the interview. <laughs> this just shows how real Tucker Carlson is. But the first one I want to get to gets into Smollett. Uh, because Tucker's always an A+. Plus, but when he knocks it out of the park and does a 100, we got to air it. And, he, and, and so this is one of those. I'm not going to air the whole piece. It's up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and NewsWars.com. But he's talking about Jeffrey, uh, or whatever the hell his name is, Jeffrey Dahmer's uh, twin buddy. I don't know why Jeffrey Dahmer pops in mind, but I guess he, he's raping and zombifying the truth. Uh, you know, he's going out there trying to create uh, destruction in, in, the, in the minds of the youth. Uh, no, no, Jesse Smollett, not, not, not Jeffrey Dahmer Smollett. Uh, this guy is the gift that just keeps on giving because... The arrogance and the, the, the conscious deception and the enjoyment of lying on camera and the absolute relishment that he's engaged in and the doubling down is incredible. And then you've got a fellow kindred spirit in Don Virtue Signaling Lemon, both oppressed millionaires, both perched with their own you know, TV programs, talking about how horrible America is and how horrible their lives have been. Of course, Lemon goes on to say the only problem was this wasn't scripted right. He got some bad advice. It wasn't executed properly. And even his own leftist co-hosts are just stuttering and stammering and saying, no, it looks like Smollett did something really, really bad. Smollett wasn't doing this to get his pay increased. He was doing it as a giant publicity stunt. The pay increase is a side issue. He was just taking the, the, uh, the, the fantasy land of mainstream corporate entertainment television that's all race war and whites are the devil and everything else and projecting it into the real world and engaged in street theater, which he knew that the corporate media would then lap up and regurgitate back onto everyone. Oh, the better part of this is... CNN, uh, all the major corporate disinfo channels, they have been running around saying, well, thank God we never got this wrong. It was blogs and the internet that did. No, it was blogs and the internet that said it was as phony as a $3 bill, as a plastic banana, as the black glasses that uh, all those CNN hosts wear to make them look smarter. It's theater by people that couldn't get into Hollywood. That's all it is. And it's an intersection uh, of those two. It was CNN. It was MSNBC. It was all the channels. Virtue signaling about the worst thing on earth had just happened. And it was all true. Out of the gates, let's just believe it. When 99% of the hate crimes are totally fake. But they always get small retraction in the back of the paper or a mention at the 10 o'clock news after a week of a cross was burned, poop swastikas, Jewish cemeteries attacked, on and on and on, breaking, coming up, hate crimes on the rise, and then tiny retraction 99% of the time. Just like 99% of the mass school shooters are on Prozac or a drug like it. Everyone knows they're planning a school shooting. The police always stand down. Same story, over and over, same M.O., over and over and over again. This is societal sickness. But there's Smollett. Hussy Smollett, Jesse Smollett, whatever you call his name, murderer of the truth Smollett, trying to hoax division and race riots in America, just like we find in the documents from 2015 that we broke in January of 2018, 13 months ago.
got no attention because it's so powerful. Documents show Obama was planning martial law in Maryland. Pull it up for folks. And it's pages, pages of secret Antifa documents that a family member got us. We checked the phone numbers. We called. We confirmed Alexander Soros was running it where they actually go to blue cities where the police are on their team. They have targeted agreed upon sites with Starbucks and with other companies to let them bash out their windows. You ever wonder why they always bash out the Starbucks, always burn the trash can in front? It's scripted to then get everyone to follow suit to try to, quote, get ethnic communities to riot. They go to black communities to stage riots, hoping they can manipulate blacks into rioting. So Smollett is under criminal investigation right now. I can tell you exclusively, it's up on Infowars.com, from federal law enforcement that I've talked to. FBI investigating whether Smollett had accomplices in Chicago who directed the staged attack, including the folks that run Empire and including the Democratic Party and the Chicago machine, namely Barack Hussein Obama, who we already know has captained operations like this. Let's go ahead, though, and go to some of Tucker Carlson last night. Here it is. It was an four. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. Well, before he claimed that white supremacists beat him up on the street, most people had never heard of Jesse Smollett. And after he became a victim, everybody wanted to be his friend. Here's Don Lamont over on CNN bragging about how he texts his new pal Jesse every single day. He's got Jesse's cell number. That's how close they are. Really tight. My concern is for him. Right, yeah. right. And for his well-being. Every day, I say, I know you think I'm annoying. I can show you a text. I know I hit pause. We're going to go to break and come back. But this is the soullessness of Hollywood projected onto CNN. This is, this is Don Lemon, you know, wearing a thermal underwear outfit so that he looks more real. Like, look, I'm real. I'm wearing thermal underwear on TV. And... In the HD, you can see it's thermal underwear. And, and and then he's like, I just care about you. Uh, uh, I know him. He's such a celebrity now. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I care about you. How are you doing? I just want to help you. Can you imagine the soulless emptiness of Don Lemon? If you were stuck on a mountaintop, would you want to be with that guy? Or on a deserted island somewhere? This is incredible. This is amazing. We're going to play it again from the start when we come back because it is the most sickening, sappy, virtue signaling crap I've ever seen. But at least Don hasn't backed off. He's defending Smollett. You found it. The most demonized, the most lied about, the most attacked, the most censored broadcast in the world. A lot of good things are happening. The globalist false flags staged events, that's their whole mindset, making themselves the victims, are being busted everywhere around the world, not just here. The problem is the globalists in any blue city, in any blue state, any blue sector, any left-hand path area, control the police completely. And they'll do almost anything. Patriots owner Bob Kraft charged with soliciting prostitution. Bust on massage parlors in Florida. Facts captured on surveillance video. Unhappy ending. Arrest warrant coming. Meanwhile, they literally let Muslim men chop their daughter's genitals off up to age 12 in the U.S. And a federal court ruled in Michigan last year that the forced drugging of what a seven and nine year old being taken to a man who basically used loppers that you use to cut branches on trees to cut their genitals off. That's okay, though. But don't you go to a jack shack. You go in that massage parlor and you let that of-age 25-year-old woman give you a happy ending, you're going to go to jail. If you're the Patriots, you can't win all these Super Bowls. You can't support the president. We're going to get you. And if we find a crooked toenail, you're going under the jail. Let's continue. I'm looking at DrudgeReport.com. Oh, don't worry. It all ties together. New York, the Southern District, 
has prepared Manafort charges if Trump pardons him. They've also prepared Trump charges. Told you that a few weeks ago. Told you the report was coming on March 1st or thereabouts now. CNN is reporting that, which doesn't make me think I'm right. Maybe my source is wrong. Of course, they can change their mind. I told you they announced a national emergency before anybody else did too. House Dems asked for a secret copy of president's taxes. Of course, you know what that means. They'll leak them the second they get them. IRS analysts charged in leak of Cohen bank records. See? Mueller could tell all in court filing. White House legal team embraces for report. Greatest constitutional crisis since the Civil War. And it just goes on. From there, I wanted to get back, though, to Smollett. But, you know, we'll just do that next segment. But the stories on Infowars.com are really, really, really important. Was Jesse Smollett hoax a Democrat operation? That's the report from yesterday where we asked the question. Well, there's no question that it comes out of the ethos of celebrating your victimhood, projecting onto everyone else that they're villains in this whole make-believe fantasy land. So there are no rules for you. All the big studies out of Canada, the U.S., Australia, Europe show about the same numbers, the U.K. You can pull these up. Just, just type in, liberals are more mentally ill than conservatives. Leftists in studies more likely to steal more likely to virtue signal, more likely to claim they're giving to charity, but what is it, nine times more likely, depending on the study, not to. They don't give to charity, but they're way more often telling you they do. That's right. They are way, way more apt to steal, on average, six times more likely to steal if you identify as a liberal. They're more likely to lie on their entrance exams or on their bar cards saying they're a Native American when they're the whitest person walking the face of the earth. Scientists can't believe how white Elizabeth Warren is. But see, that's, that's what I'm getting at here is we all know the truth about these people. They're total frauds, but it's a big report. People need to get this out. Because we're all talking about, well, will he get the boot at the show and what's going to happen? How about him sending a letter, which is clear wire fraud, meant to cause a race war in this country and meant to defame tens of millions of people and say they're all racist. And so they deserve to have hate crime attacks against them, which every day I see videos of people getting their heads bloodied, their eyes knocked in, their teeth knocked out, uh, hot coffee dumped on them for wearing Make America Great Again hats. But none of that ever hits the national news. It's all how the poor black man making millions a year was out at two in the morning and two guys run up with a rope around his neck and scream, this is MAGA country and pour bleach on him and try to beat him up. But he fights him off. He's a hero. Cue the Rocky Balboa music. He's Apollo Creed, knocking out the bad guys. And the police show up 40 minutes after he calls him, and he's got the rope around his neck and two symmetrical scars, little tiny scratches on each cheek. I mean, how do you know when a banana is fake? You pick it up, you can't peel it, it's plastic. How do you know when a, a bill of U.S. denomination is fake? Because we don't have $3 bills. They open the door, and it's $3 bill, man. I'm plastic banana. I'm Jesse Smollett. Or snake in a can. You open the can, a snake shoots out. It's not a real snake. How do you know? Well, it's it's polyester. It isn't a real snake. Well, that's a conspiracy theory. You're not allowed to have your own judgment. Just believe us. You saw him. And by the way, Trevor Noah has given an award for being a great actor. It was horribly fake. Like when your kid gets caught doing something wrong, so they fake cry. <laughs> My boyfriend said, honey, did not go to find who did it. They got away with it. <laughs> Mommy! Mommy! That's not real crying. He thought they're talking about his dead grandma. All of a sudden, tears come to his eyes. Now it's that same Barack Obama thing where you get the, there's no tears, but you've got the little little handkerchief, and you're like. <laughs>
I mean, he looks like a little kid throwing a fit. It's totally fake. We're going to go to break. But here's the big story. It's up on Infowars.com. It's very, 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 very important that the feds are investigating. We'll see what comes out of it. Uh, the, if he had handlers or people behind him. Report FBI investigating whether Smollett had accomplices in Chicago who directed staged attack. And they're using the ongoing federal investigation that's happening into the wire fraud to get into that. But they've got his telephone. They've got the warrants out. They're getting all the data back. And now they're going to start talking to the folks at Empire, the producers, the directors, because, hey, you can take this show from being a hit to being a mega hit. Instead of making $5 million an episode, they can make $20, $30 million an episode. And then Mr. Smollett and everybody else gets their raise. And there's the motive. And then it got the nod from the Chicago machine as well. That's good to divide the people. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, I want to finish you up with Smollett because we got a bunch of big guests today that I haven't even mentioned yet that we're going to get to at the start of the next hour. We have about three or four guests on today that are all extremely informative. But let me finish up with Smollett. You're going to get next week's news here today, ladies and gentlemen, because the feds are criminally investigating Smollett, not just for wire fraud, but for being directed by the show's producers. That doesn't mean they're guilty. Doesn't mean they've done it, but they have evidence trails that lead directly to the Democratic Party and to the producers of the show. Imagine, it's already a hit show. And then the incredible story of the black gay Jewish actor got all his bases covered. Maybe he was trans, be a little even better. Gets attacked by two horrible thugs, white men, wearing masks, but they're white. You can see their faces. They put a noose on his neck. They try to beat him up. They pour a substance on him. They say, this is MAGA country. This is MAGA country, boy. Get out of here. Pace picante sauce ad. And if you're watching TV, there are the vicious, evil, grand dragons themselves. Two black guys from Nigeria. And they were there for writing the note, all of it, for the wire fraud. But why did Smollett think he could go on national television? And <laughs> the worst part is, he said, Sonny, you're never going to find it, did it? <laughs> worst acting I've ever seen. But it's okay, Trevor Noah defends it and says he deserves a Emmy. It's okay if you lie. It's a good thing if you lie. And Don Lemon says, well, too bad he didn't have good advice. Too bad it didn't didn't go the way it was supposed to. His, his, only, his only failure is, is that higher-ups got him to do it. I think that's what Lemon is telegraphing when he made the statements that shocked everybody. Because if you don't think CNN and the rest of these people stage stuff, well, I got a bridge I'm ready to sell you in Brooklyn and some oceanfront property in Arizona and a couple other cliches. So the full video of Tucker Carlson going over this is up on Infowars.com, but let's... Let's go to it. It's, it's hard not to start and stop it because it's so fake. It's so condescending. It's so disgusting. But really, it's just best you see it for yourself. Here it is. It was an all for. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. Well, before he claimed that white supremacists beat him up on the street, most people had never heard of Jesse Smollett. And after he became a victim, everybody wanted to be his friend. Here's Don Lamont over on CNN bragging about how he texts his new pal Jesse every single day. He's got Jesse's cell number. That's how close they are. Really tight. My concern is for him. Right, yeah. right. And for his well-being. Every day, I say, I know you think I'm annoying. I can show you a text. I know you think I'm annoying you, but I just want to know that you're you doing. Oh, okay. That you're okay. Yeah. If you need somebody, you can talk to me because there's not a lot, lot of us. Out there. Yeah. Right. Yep. Sometimes he responds, sometimes he doesn't. He responds and says, you are not annoying. You can talk to me, Don Lamont says, because there aren't a lot of us out there. Well, here's the translation. Us means people who've been oppressed in the ways that Jesse Smollett has been oppressed. Lamont is letting you know that he's in that group too. Yes, he's a highly paid news anchor with his own TV show. And yet, like Jesse Smollett, Don Lamont is a holy victim. So there's a mad scramble over who's the victim here. 
Who is the victim? Well, there is one. What Smollett did was not a victimless crime. There's no such thing as that. An entire group of people did get slandered by this hoax. Regular people from outside the coastal cities. People with the wrong political beliefs and the wrong skin color. Smollett and his many defenders savagely attacked these people and are not apologizing for doing it. Instead, they're telling you, you hear this everywhere, that the real losers here are the authentic victims of hate crimes who won't be believed the next time. Okay, that's fine. But what about the innocent Americans they just poured venom on for two weeks because it matched some bigoted stereotype they had about middle America? What about them? There's no mention of them. Donald Mann would very much like to keep up those attacks on those people. Attacking them allows him to feel oppressed. That is why when Smollett was finally caught, Lamont reacted in a very puzzling way. He didn't seem especially concerned that his buddy had lied to further divide the country to hurt America, which he did. No, that wasn't the real problem. The real problem, according to Don Lamont, is that Smollett's arrest might discredit the cult of victimhood. This is playing out every single moment yeah. in cable news. Sean Hannity's going to eat Jussie Smollett's lunch every single second. Tucker Carlson is going to eat Jussie Smollett's lunch every single second. Yeah, because when you tell the truth about a hate hoax, you're the real hater. What's the cost of this attitude so floridly on display to our society? What does it do to us? Well, think of it this way. What would happen to your kids if you woke them up every morning by telling them that they were victims? No matter how hard they worked, people would always hate them just for who they are. What if you did that? Would that be good parenting? Would it make your kids stronger, happier, more successful? No, it wouldn't. And good parents would never do that. Good parents tell their tell their kids that you're an individual and you can do anything you want as long as you're determined and focused and work hard enough. But if you look at the weird spirit that's on these Hollywood people, black, white, doesn't matter. It, it's, it's, it's a creepy arrested development. Like they're in junior high, they always wear a vest with lots of little buttons all over it of all the groups they affiliate with and who they are and... And then you, you're the bad guy, see? So they have to be an authority because you're the oppressor, you're the bad guy, and they're the jail warden. Yeah, yeah, let's play some of these clips of so-called celebrities saying, how dare you question Jesse Smollett? This is a, a week ago, they were still saying, you don't question Jesse Smollett. And that's why there needs to be a bigger criminal investigation, which there is. There needs to be a bigger criminal investigation because this is premeditated and you know it is. And Jesse Smollett won't even admit he staged it yet. So what's he get a slap on the wrist? And they say he did it for money. He did it for fame and power and to oppress whole groups that voted for somebody he didn't like. They did it to dominate and to frame America as bad while he gets fat off the tit of America. We've got a bunch of these compilations of Hollywood and the media saying, don't question Smollett, worshiping Smollett. So play whichever one you guys want. Here it is. We've got some breaking news. Actor and musician Jussie Smollett from the hit show Empire was attacked and beaten early this morning in Chicago. Police are looking for two potential persons of interest in a possible hate crime against actor Jesse Smollett. His attackers hurled racial and homophobic slurs. Two people yelled racist and homophobic slurs. Racial and homophobic slurs. Not only homophobia, we're talking about racism. We're talking about hate with steroids. The offenders uttered, this is MAGA country. He said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. They are looking for two suspects who are apparently wearing Make America Great Again hats. I'm disgusted by people who wear hats that say MAGA. Make America Great Again. I don't like that it's being put out there in the media that this is a right. possible yeah. hate crime. Right. I think that even sows a seed that makes people feel a like, doubt. well, is he making this up? The media has really cast so much doubt on his story, which I find so personally offensive that a gay black man is targeted and then suddenly he becomes the victim of yeah. people's disbelief. Yeah. We have a media that's saying it's a debate whether or not what just happened to Jesse Smollett is a hate Crime. It's absurd. It's coming from the President of the United States. He's dog whistling every day. Senator Cory Booker said the vicious attack on actor Jesse was an attempted modern day lynching. Kamala Harris calling the attack 
and attempted modern day lynching. If his claims turn out to be a complete hoax, it would just be one. All right, folks, we'll be right back. I'm going to move to some other big issues here, but this is really blown up in their face. It's totally American. The question for the first amendment's all about. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central, I'm here live. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Don't forget, the David Knight Show, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Comes on right before I do. Right here at Infowars.com forward slash show on radio and TV stations across the country. And the War Room with our own Owen Schroyer hosting. And then his co-host, who's been gagged, Roger Stone. Haven't even gotten to that point yet. We have the inside baseball on what happened inside the courtroom yesterday where yours truly was brought up quite a bit. But we're going to have one of Roger's uh, confederates, one of his writers, joining us, popping in later in between all these other guests. But let me bring up something here about the whole Jesse Smollett situation. While we're all busy fighting with each other over what color we are or where we came from or what religion we are, while we throw the free market and Constitution and Bill of Rights out the door, out the window, flush it down the toilet, throw it in the garbage can. The social engineers are dividing and conquering us. And of course, I'm putting out a completely known statement. People are like, yeah, tell us something we don't know. But while we're fighting with each other over stuff that really doesn't matter, it's important to expose it or they'll keep doing it. So the fact that they're using it to divide and conquer does matter, but... In the final equation, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't be an issue. If we were going to progress according to ideas and what we stand for and what we develop and what we build, that's how a world gets better, is that we all support and promote what is better. And we have to have a real debate about what that is and then vote with our dollars, vote with our feet, vote with our actions, and that's what builds a better world. The problem is, is that the technocrats, the robber barons, the last 150 years, decided to have the end of history and the final revolution, they use both terms, and to build a world that made humans obsolete, that first domesticated us, then controlled us, then reduced our attention span, then reduced our fertility, and finally, implants, cancer viruses, and the vaccines that are time delayed to give you a good case of viral cancer when you retire. And that's in the literature, that's in the facts. But don't worry, we have NBC News out. Vaccine misinformation and info wars. Researchers wary of Facebook embracing of groups. So any groups that aren't Alex Jones, but mention info wars, why even use that evil word? You'll be taken down. You'll be banned. NBC News, and they've got all the usual suspects. The professors and the analysts, they're all there about how dangerous Jones is and his disinfo on vaccines. And they don't give any examples. There's a multi-billion dollar secret vaccine damage fund run by Rod Rosenstein's sister that makes everybody sign away their rights and sign NDAAs about their kids dying or being brain damaged from vaccines. It's a fact that it's going on. It's a fact that everybody knows they've had bad reactions to vaccines. It's a fact that it's on the vaccine inserts that can kill you dead or to hammer or give you all these different disorders or give you the shingles you're taking a shot to get away from or give you the flu. And they're saying, we don't like these moms and these dads talking about what happened to them or even showing medical reports or doctors admitting it. And so once we've demonized Alex Jones, we're then going to expand out to everybody else and just say, you want said info wars. You once said Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we've shown you five witnesses in the year 21. This woman talked about Alex Jones at a grocery store to her neighbor, and she's now sentenced to prison. She's now sentenced from the year 2021. Five years ago, witnessed, verbally speaking, the verboten one who will not be named. Remember Wired Magazine? I'm red, white, and blue, and black hands are grabbing me out of the dark and pulling me in. I'm being, I'm being disappeared. I'm being digitally murdered. And I would guess that the artist either subconsciously or consciously doesn't like what's happening, but to get paid, 
So I've had a lot of people tell me they do this. They write almost satirical articles against me because they're ordered to do it. And they're, and they're told to give uh, anti-Alex Jones pledges. Well, we're going to give you your third Discovery Channel show. Your other shows have been big hits. But you must go on the new episode and speak out against Alex Jones and say he's bad. And so they say, go fly a kite, go jump in the lake. Go to hell, I will go to Texas. But imagine the iconography. Let's show it again. In fact, let's put it big screen behind me for TV viewers. I'm red, white, and blue, and the black hands are grabbing me, pulling me into the darkness, down to that black lake of tyranny where freedom dies, the Washington Post talks so much about. There's your subliminal. Ah, the black hand dragging you into the La Brea tar pits forever. Only to be studied by future civilizations. That's the message. Shut your mouth. That message isn't to me, it's a message to the readers. Shut your mouth, America, or a big black hand's going to reach up out of the swamp and it's going to drag you kicking and screaming down to the bottom with the crocodiles and the alligators and the big eels. <laughs> so maybe it wasn't a subversive artist. No, I don't think so. It was a message. America, shut up. You're going down and nothing's going to stop that now. World government's here, and America's head's going to be mounted on that wall. That's period. That's end of discussion. That's the reality. So, some of the other news I have here, we'll get to next hour, the communist Chinese world social score is already being used in Venezuela. Surprise, surprise. And it's already here. And that's what this all is, is introducing you to where you don't buy or sell unless you're a good little globalist. That's all coming up next hour. Oh, and don't worry, you go through those drive through now, you wonder why for the first time ever, the attendants get your order right the first time? It sounds like a human, it's not, it's AI. And again, everything's designed for a world without humans. That's the globalist leap, that's the world they're building. So it's all coming up next hour. Um, briefly here, as you know, I cannot stress enough, because this is like a long war. In fact, it's not like a long war, it is a long war. And so as the war gets more intense, we're here pointing out that you are what makes the info war possible. We've held that a long time thanks to you, thanks to your stamina, your support. And they think by demonizing info wars everywhere, you'll be afraid to talk about it. I would use the fact we've been so demonized as an incentive to say, hey, you probably heard of InfoWars and Alex Jones. Well, why don't you go find out why the media is so mad and why he's so demonized and what it is he's really covering. You know, I went to a Caribbean peninsula uh, for four days with my wife and children and just to get some sun. And my wife is going up the elevator and she went down to the front desk to change rooms when we checked in because they gave us, we wanted adjoining rooms, but that part doesn't matter. She goes down there and she's coming back up and there's women on the elevator with a man and they're like, yes, I can't believe he's in the hotel. Ugh. And the other woman goes, isn't he in prison? And the husband goes, no, 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 that's the other one. Probably talking about Roger Stone. And my wife didn't say anything to him but these people literally think I need to go to prison. They're authoritarians. And they get real mad when they see me with all my kids, too. It's like, I'm supposed to be lost my kids. I have my kids 90% of the time. So, see, they want the left to have these victories where they think, oh, we got that bad guy. Or, oh, he's off the air. But it shows what they desire. Because if they already believe I'm in prison in a simulation, they will love the real thing. These are dangerous people. People like Smollett and others. So listen, when you buy the products, you make it all possible, but it's such a simple equation. You get your protein bars. Ours are high-end, five, six, seven dollars at Whole Foods, similar bars. Ours are $3 regular price, $2.40 right now, discounted. You get two boxes, it's even discounted more, and two great flavors, amazing high quality. Get your toothpaste from us, fluoride-free, little silver iodine, fortified. 
get your tube of toothpaste with us, sign up for auto ship every month, every two months, every three months, every, you know, you, you cancel any time, one click, you get 10% off on the next order. That way you just get it to your door. You know, you put in your support, your tithe to the truth, and you get your Wake of America coffee, sign up every month for that. You, you can do it every 15 days if you want. It's got little default settings. You can, uh, just know that you're getting great products and funding the info war by getting your toothpaste with us, by getting your high quality bone broth with us, by getting your protein bars with us, by getting your fish oil with us, by getting your turmeric with us. It's all there at InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsLife.com is the subpage for the supplements or 888 A fight continues on straight ahead. Stay with us. Martin Marcota is going to be joining us Coming up in the next segment, you know, the global digital cashless society isn't coming. It's here. And once they've got you in that position, they can socially engineer society any way they want. And major governments like Sweden and others are announcing plans to get rid of cash altogether by 2021 and to make everyone, quote, take microchips to drive a car or get on a bus. That's mainstream news. Infowars.com, next decade's news today. And that's why they want us off air. She is coming up in the next segment. She has been deplatformed off of Chase Bank. You say, well, just leave Chase Bank. We've had five of the six banks we had taken. We had a A++ rating, the highest rating you can get from this private group that rates it out of Boston. But the day after PayPal banned us, they gave us an F rating for hate. And needless to say, the lawyers have asked me not to get to this yet, but this is the real lawsuit. The lawsuit isn't these big corporations and these big tech people censoring, that's bad enough. It's, it's big ratings agencies. When you don't play ball and you have a perfect corporate credit score, Perfect. Perfect. Because we used to have the establishment try to do chargebacks and put them through and then see if we'd miss them to try to uh, degrade us like 10 years ago. And I just said, hey, don't challenge the chargebacks. People want to scam us, you know, whatever. And or if you do it, challenge them that day. And we have a perfect rating because we never hit the banks with chargebacks. Because you can do that. And. So for, for actually being perfect, essentially, I mean, you're talking as good as it gets, gone, when one group just goes, Ch -ch -ch. we say, because the Southern Poverty Law Center is God, like Moses, and then Moses says, Alex Jones bad, and then rating agency says, oh, he'll never figure out that dumb hayseed down in Texas, that we're going to put a fraudulent F rating on him. He doesn't even know what our group is out of Boston. He doesn't know any of this stuff. He doesn't know we've got, he'll, he'll never get copies of our directives. Oh, they'll never be high level bank heads that, that, that demand answers. There won't be any memos, just like the heads of the Oxycontin Corporation said, we're going to get people addicted. In fact, I, I, I didn't cover that two weeks ago. So I, I covered this years ago and warned people about it, but I didn't even cover it when I was proven right again. Will you guys print that up for me? Company that owns Oxycontin said, the headline was, we're going to be their one-stop shop for getting you addicted, and then we're going to have drugs to get you off of it that are almost as bad. Kind of like heroin was invented after the Civil War to replace opium addiction. We got, we got a lot of troops. They're addicted to opium. We got their arms and legs sawed off, and they're addicted to opium. What do we do? Well, we invented a thing you know, that's 20, 30, 40 times stronger than the average opium. It's called heroin. And it'll sure as you won't want opium anymore after you have this. It's like, you got a problem snorting cocaine? Try something called crack. It'll fix it. Same deal. So that's the new thing is you just got rating agencies where they just say, hey, we're going to say you're an evil person. Well, we're going to sue your ass off, bitch. So get ready for that. But I need capital to do it. Stay with us. Infowars.com, Newswars.com. Tomorrow's news today. Stay with us. Well, Martina Marcota is a fellow thought criminal. She's been on the show before. Very smart lady, also very lovely. And she's a, a talented dancer uh, and exhibitionist. 
And she is also, again, somebody that has to be silenced. So you have to understand something, ladies and gentlemen. A global corporate system is testing a planetary social credit score, which is basically digital minders, digital spy systems, digital control, where if you don't play ball in cyberspace or in the real world, you then get demonized and then you start getting unpersoned. And I have the articles uh, right here in my stack today. China bans millions from flights, trains in social credit crackdown. That's a big zero hedge article and it links directly to the communist Chinese newspapers who are very, very proud of this. Now in my film, Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, I said in the near future, if you haven't played ball with the globalist and you haven't done what they want socially, they will not let you buy or sell. I didn't get that from the Bible. I got it from their own statements. But it is interesting that the Bible's coming true. It's either real or they're building it, which makes it real. See, either way, it's still real. It's incredible. So th this is the big threat to everyone. Banks, not letting you bank if you sell hunting supplies at your hardware store or the NRA. And and the, the fact that people aren't organizing against this is absolutely incredible. So I want to go to our guest and I want to ask her, Martina, uh, to tell folks a little bit about yourself because if I tell it, it won't be as good as if, 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 if you tell it. And I think your main crime is you've been successful. You've reached hundreds of millions of people. You have millions of fans. And so... It's because you're effective uh, at exposing this corrupt system that uh, you're now being unpersoned. People say, well, just go get another bank account. Oh, no, this means they've put a hate rating. And when I file suit, you're, you're going to need to you know, obviously join our class action suit. They, they've put a hate rating in there that has nothing to do with your real activity. And so they have implemented the Chinese style uh, control grid on you by stealth. So you are definitely a, a victim of this. Not that you want to be a victim. We're not in the victim class here, but uh, it's because we're not in the victim class. They want to make us victims. So, so thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and I mean, it's definitely, um, I was a performer in New York City and they were not happy that I was a Trump supporter and a conservative in general. So they uh, blacklisted me, kicked me out of the scene, and they really went after my income that way extremely, extremely hard. So I had to move on and figure out what else am I gonna do with my career? And the only thing since my reputation was tarnished was to get involved in uh, media and expose this stuff and, and just stick up for our side. So I've been doing that. So them trying to ruin my life didn't work as, as well as they planned. So um, I actually have a business account with Chase. I've had it for eight years, it's an LLC. And um, so I talk about arts and culture because you know how important that is. Um, politics is downstream from uh, culture. And um, there's something called Comicscape, which is pretty much Gamergate, but in the comics industry. So there's a lot of people that went away from DC and Marvel's extreme SJW left-wing propaganda with their failing comics. And a lot of these people went independent and they started going on Indiegogo and creating um, independent comics and doing it incredibly well. They have uh, went head to head with DC and Marvel and they made like $2 million this, since this past summer, uh, cumulatively all together. So uh, I wanted to keep pursuing my performing kind of persona, Lady Alchemy. So I did a comic book uh, with these comic skaters. And, How um, dare you? <laughs> yeah. And it, so the, my Chase business account is linked with that Indiegogo. And we did incredibly well. We're so far over $34,000. Wow. Trying uh, to raise money, trying to publish books. How un-American. Yeah. So when I got the letter that my um, business account is being closed down, I was really freaked out because I said, this is my one thing that I have. They tried to get rid of me in every single way possible, run me out of New York City, ruin all my career opportunities. So now I have this new opportunity amongst a group of the comic skaters that, you know, are doing incredibly well. So it's it's a really interesting thing because, you know, the left keep trying to tear us down. But the one industry, ironically, that we are kicking butt in is the arts. It's the comic book industry. So we're doing really, really because well. Because the left aren't and, uh, the left. They aren't the liberals. Them. They're not creative. They always pose as if they're the real liberals and they control art because they're the opposite of a real liberal. They're leftist control freaks who destroy civilization. So that's why they always want to be in charge of the arts and in charge of speech is because they don't have any talent. 
Yeah, and I think that they're really afraid because this Comscape is doing so well. Um, they they really try to shut us down all the time. They keep going after a lot of the big independent creators, trying to shut them down. Um, you know, go after them, and they've been fighting it. They actually one of them did a tortious interference. So when you go after them legally, that shows them they can't do this. You know, so that's a really good method of, of going after someone that's trying to mess with your contracts and mess with you uh, professionally. And so when I got this letter, I was really, really upset because it's tied to my comic book and what we're doing with Comicsgate. And uh, it, it could have sh essentially it could have shut it all down. But uh, luckily, Indiegogo is working with me. But yeah, so it's bigger than just, oh, get another bank. I mean, I think they were really targeting me because we're doing something here. You know, we're kicking ass in the arts. And uh, I didn't think I wasn't sure if it was political. So I got the letter and I said, how could this be? You know, I, I it's all legal activity. I've no, I don't have any criminal record. Everything is up to par. I've had this account for eight years. Why is this happening? And so I called them and uh, they wouldn't tell me why. They said that they have the right to if you see the letter, it says uh, we're ending our relationship with you. <laughs> And I was like, okay, my bank is breaking up with me. Well, I'll tell you and, the problem. Uh, Let's scroll back up to the top. Anything they target is what they can track virally is already number one or is going to be number one. Like I've been number one on all these different platforms, so they banned me. Number one on the App Store right when our news app launched a month before the ban. And, and, and let's go back to the comic book. Let's go to that top one. That looks like world-class art. You look powerful. You also look sexy. You've got a sword in your hand. This is everything the left is afraid of, because I wouldn't even call you a right-winger or a left-winger. You're just a pro-freedom person. They're scared right. of that. This is what would actually target their demographic, but, but with freedom. So that's this is a badge of honor that they're coming after you, uh, because what you're doing is obviously powerful. Yeah, and um, I... The, after that happened to me and I posted about it, I started noticing that the Proud Boy guy had his uh, Chase Bank. It was Chase and it had the same letter as me. Then I noticed Joe Biggs and I started noticing all these other stories of Chase targeting people that were in my scene, people I knew. And so that was when I said, OK, there's something more to this. But they refused to tell me exactly why. They said that they reserved the right to uh, uh, get re end our relationship and not tell me why. And uh, I think it's a reputational risk. Well, isn't That's that a Kafka-esque situation uh, is that they won't even tell you the thought crime you've committed. Well, let me tell you what's happened because we got the secret documents. And this is going to be coming out soon in a lawsuit. I'm going to give the enemy a heads up. Um, it, it's, it's very simple. You get listed by the Southern Poverty Law Center or anybody else. They then, in this secret banking cartel, uh, it's tied into Interpol, you name it, they, they, they put an H symbol in your file. You don't get told about it. You don't know. It's a secret blacklist with the banks and then it's going to move on to i'm sure you've heard about uber banning people uh these uh, different airbnb groups banning people yeah that happened to me that happened to me in dc too actually my uber just stopped working at one point yeah that's yeah. it and so that they've got a database of the chinese socials credit score that they go put a fraudulent like conviction on your record a secret court a secret file a secret database out of boston they go put it on the file, and then now other groups are joining it. it it's it's like InfraGuard. It's, it's, it's part of the FBI. And then as other groups join it, sure, there's secret lists for Al-Qaeda or ISIS. It's the same thing. You've been put on an ISIS list. I believe it. I truly, truly believe it. And I didn't want to get into that, and I didn't want to assume and go, oh, it's because I'm a free thinker that this is happening. But um, the evidence is really starting to show that uh, they're really targeting us. And uh, it's really scary because going after your bank account, going after your business is serious. Well, this is the good news. It's so criminal, they keep it secret. It's not going to be secret much longer. You understand? I've got more lawyers flying in today. We're going to decide when and how, but I'm giving the enemy heads up. We're getting all the witnesses, all the documents. We have everything. National scandal. Stay with us. Jesse Smollett, if his false flag would have been successful, now under criminal investigation by the FBI for higher-ups directing him in the Democratic Party, as well as the people controlling the hit show Empire, it'd be an even bigger hit if the hoax would have been carried out. But it was too obvious, too childish, and too well documented but imagine if he'd been successful now everyone with a red hat every white person we're all horrible race criminals who deserve to have our bank accounts taken who deserve to be shut down who deserve to be made to submit until we're offered the road to redemption last week i had three very high-powered people call me two of them household names and they said alex there's a road for redemption 
and there's open arms. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just that we have to admit how bad this is. We're going to go back to our guests. I want to ask her to ride shotgun into the next segment if she can with Faith Golding because they're both going through the same crap because they're smart, good-looking women. That scares the hell out of leftists. They want a bunch of victims they control uh, with a bunch of chicken neck, weird feminists dominating them, making sure they're miserable as possible uh, and not using their feminine power. But let's go right back uh, just real quick to uh, Smollett and all of his fake garbage. Here it is. Let's up. <laughs> I was talking to a friend and I said, I just want them to find them. And she said, sweetie, they're not going to find them. And that just made me so angry because so I'm just going to be left here with this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to be left here with, <laughs> with like, <laughs> so they get to go free and go about their life and possibly attack someone else. And I'm here to left with the, left with the aftermath of this pool. Yeah. That's not cool to me. That's not okay. So I understand how difficult it will be to find them, but we gotta. I still want to believe with everything that has happened that there's something called justice. Because if I stop believing that, then what's it all for? Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesse. Oh, my God, Jesse. This is so hot right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, the U.N. openly funded with Obama the murder of hundreds of thousands in the Arab Spring, tens of thousands of women and children in sex slavery. You got a Madeleine Albright on TV saying 500,000 kids are a good price to pay for, quote, security in the Gulf. There's no thank you, Jesse, to that. So going back to our guest, uh, who has been basically unpersoned uh, off of her bank account, Martina Marcota, who's at Twitter for now and Instagram at Martina Marcota, M-A-R-K-O-T-A, and Martina Marcota.com. Uh, again, you're involved in hit comic books. That's your real crime because most people don't get their news even from Comedy Central anymore. They get it from the comic books. You're breaking into verboten, archetypal Joseph Campbell uh, type symbolism and alchemy. And that's really your crime, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually also in uh, Trump Space Force. I think you know Timothy Lim and, and them. So uh, check out check out that. But uh, yeah, no, my book has uh, the occult symbolism of the elite and my character is like she becomes red pilled and discovers the hidden influences of media and advertising uh, that's saturated in cities and stuff like that. And so it's about exposing that sort of thing. And, um, you know, I think it's super fun. It's it's not very much like leftist art where they go out of their way to make sure you see their SJW agenda. It's just fun for anyone to watch, but I am kind of secretly, hiddenly exposing some things. And again, it's the delivery system they really hate. So, so, so where do you go from here? Because obviously we'll need to talk soon because we are gonna have to file suit against these folks. I um, mean, this is yes, a big yeah. national criminal operation. Think about when the public learns that there's a secret database and they're preparing to put all conservatives on it. Yeah, I truly believe that. And I cannot believe that that is really something that where we're at today. I mean, I remember watching you many, many years ago talking about this sort of stuff when you had Billy Corrigan on. I've always liked, you know, the arts and stuff and, and watching you. So uh, it, I, you were saying stuff about this years ago like 10 years ago and here we are today and it's it's not even a conspiracy it's it's real life i mean it's happening to me now and um i don't know uh we definitely have to do something i have to switch my bank accounts and transfer tens of thousands of dollars and make sure indiegogo has, is updated with my new bank account so they've given me that little extra burden to do so yes of course i can change banks um but ultimately People were saying there's some sort of law, like there, there's some sort of association with the government that Chase has. So this actually can be, it is illegal. It's not like they're oh, just like a private. Listen, the database, when there's no law to create a designation that's just r random put on your account to say you're a bad person and, and then to put on your credit uh, that you're a bad person. I mean, that's yeah. fraud. It's, 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 I mean, that's defamation. What that is, is an attempt to torturously interfere and ruin your life uh, because yeah. Listen, I'm sure you've, you've asked, how did you get targeted? You know about sleeping giants and, and all these other groups. The left goes around brigading. 
And so they've yeah. already, they think, knocked me into the ground. So now NBC reports anyone just saying InfoWars or Alex Jones is next. That's NBC News. Anyone criticizing vaccines, like, hey, my daughter got killed from it, or, you know, my, I went blind from it, or look, the insert says it can kill you. That's all going to be banned. It's just basically everything. And so the media's new job, these journalists aren't really journalists anymore. They organize brigades of leftists to make millions of phone calls and emails to target each person. So they also harass companies till they do this. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that in my performing professional career, them brigade and do that. But I think that um, I have an association with Gavin. You know, people associate me with being on Gavin's show and stuff like that. So I think that's probably why my account was. Oh, exactly. Because, because they're really scared of Proud Boys. Why do you think they're so scared yeah. of Proud Boys? And you would dare go on the founder's show. I mean, guys that stand up to people that beat up women and children and, and defensively defend women and children. There's nothing worse, is there? No, I mean, trying to uh, venerate the housewife and just have a simple like little men's club. I mean, what's wrong with that? You can't have a men's club nowadays. <laughs> It's insane. But yeah, I'm associated to him. And so now everyone just constantly, they've been doing it in the comics gate too. They, they've they been targeting and saying, she's a proud boy, even though I'm a woman. Um, and trying to say that that's the reason why I'm some sort of Nazi or white supremacist or something. Well, so. I mean, you're not anti-male. And so that's why you're mad. Yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, I support men for being men. And uh, I have a totally different duty as, as a woman. And uh, I, that's what I portray in the comic books as well. That's what's been going on in the scene is that I don't know if you've noticed, but they've been trying to defeminize women in the comic book industry. Well, and yeah, let's talk about sexualized. that when we come back. Start getting into that. They want to take the real power from women and create these right. sexless blobs. And, and why right. is that? Because they don't want men being powerful. Men. They don't want women being powerful. They don't want us in our powerful roles. Yeah, it's just one big hodgepodge of uh, non non-gendered things. And they get very angry about it in the comics industry. They don't want women to be feminine. And I think that's the most anti-feminist thing I can think of. Well, my wife walked out of the house today in a black trench coat and black high heel boots. And I thought I was going to fall over. I mean, she knows about the feminine and just uh, is dripping with it. And I just can't believe that they've convinced women to turn that power loose. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us with our guest. And we have another powerful woman joining us, Faith Goldie. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, another woman the enemy fears. We'll have both on together. And we'll ask him why women are under attack. Well, we got so much to talk about here. Uh, Faith Goldie ran for mayor. She was in third place out of 30-something people going towards number one. They banned her advertising on the Internet, on radio, on TV. They've been taking her off the Internet everywhere. We have uh, Martina Marcota as well. Uh, and she is a artist and performer and writer and, and comic book author and a bunch of other successful things. She's been on the show before. She also goes out as a journalist and covers the insanity of the leftist uh, here in the U.S. and also in Europe. And so I wanted to get Faith Goldie back on because she recently got married and has been out of commission. But she's back uh, to talk about what's going on in Canada. But meanwhile, they've got nationwide gun confiscation about to be announced. We've got people running around talking about national gun confiscation here. Uh, we've got all this censorship happening, but people are fighting back with the yellow vest. What is the state of the world? You just traveled Europe, uh, Faith Goldie. Well, I'd say that the regular guy rebellion is in full swing and that Canada has not been spared. As you mentioned, Alex, uh, just just in um, that our Justin Trudeau is about to announce uh, what sounds like a nationwide handgun ban. They've uh, paraded around all the victims from various terrorist attacks who are now saying that law-abiding gun owners are somehow to blame for the firearms that were used, the illegal firearms that were used. And of course, Alex, as you covered dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of times on your program, we all know what this means. We've read this, this textbook in history before. We know that gun confiscation eventually leads essentially to an open playing field for the tyrant. And what's so interesting about this, and I would say a word to the wise for, for you Yank, so to speak, uh, south of the 49th, is this. The guns that they're coming after here in Canada, uh, they're, they're called restricted firearms, i.e. they are on a registration, a registry. And Alex, time and time again, folks within the pro-gun, pro-2A community say that registration leads to confiscation and Canada right now is standing on the brink with this gun-grabbing, tyrannical, far-left so-called post-national government um, any day now due to release a report, the priming 
the populists right now, but getting the victims out there saying we want a nationwide handgun ban, telling us that a report is about to come out. And they're saying that uh, action thereafter might be imminent. Well, let's not forget when Trump declared a national emergency that's constitutional for the border, the Democrats, both Pelosi and Nadler, said, well, we'll use an emergency to take your guns. In fact, here's a clip of uh, Nadler just last Friday. Um, if the president can declare an emergency today on this nonsense, on, on this, uh, the Democratic president can decide that, the, as you mentioned, the gun cry, the, the 40,000 people a year killed in this country is a, is, a, is a crisis. And why don't we take everybody's guns away or force everybody to register their guns or, or ban all assault rifles or do all of that? Martina Marcota riding shotgun with us here with Faith Goldie. And again, your website's martinamarcota.com. Faith uh, Goldie sites, fa uh, faith for Toronto.ca and at Twitter, Faith Goldie. And it's important to go to their sites themselves, folks. That's where you have to go now to actually get to people because everything's being massively censored. You, your take on this, why do you think, I'm going to ask Goldie this, why do you think the left's gone from denying they want the guns to admitting it, denying they want to sexualize children admit, now admitting it, denying they want to destroy the family now admitting it? I want to ask you both what you brought up for the break. Why are they so afraid of powerful, smart, good-looking, feminine women? Well, because they're jealous of it. But, but I want to get your, uh, your take on, first, the guns. Why do you think the left's being so out in the open now? Well, I mean, I think that they can do that now. I, I, this is what they've always thought, but they have to do it slowly, you know? They start slow, and then now they're at the point where they can do those things. And uh, it's, it's just obvious. That's what I think. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's it. They're making their move. They think it's time to do it. Uh, Faith, what do you think? That, that, that Martina is completely right. And hi, Martina, nice to see you here in 2D. Um, you, <laughs> yeah. um, well, you know, look, it, this is what we talk about all the time, the Overton window, you know, it needs to be shifted in order to move around the perimeter, so to speak, of what we deem as acceptable within society. I remember before, for instance, the New York legislation about abortion, I'm pro-lifer, I'm unabashed about that, saying they don't care about term limits. They don't, they know what they're doing. They don't think this is a clump of cells. They know that they're out here killing babies. These people are spawns of Satan. And sure enough, now they've come out into full force because the populace have become so um, uh, deprogrammed from reality and programmed into a complete vortex of untruths and lies that we're, we're to hear more lies, to hear complete evil, to hear complete um, essentially advocation, uh, advocacy for murder no longer shocks us as it would have, frankly, our forefathers. And the exact same thing is happening right now with firearms. Alex, it's just a registry. It's just a registry. It's just to make sure that we can keep track of where all the big, bad, scary guns are. And then now I'm dumb. reading I'm reading the uh, Toronto paper. I'm reading the national paper. I'm reading Economist. And it's like, yeah, gun confiscation to begin we just showed the headline for tv viewers they're actually saying we're going to confiscate the guns and folks go well that's only canada no the new york times the case for repealing the second amendment and i agree with you faith they're pushing the envelope mm -hmm. well i think that's that exactly they it. started sorry i was just going to say ahead. that i think that they started with this stuff now uh back then they never would have gotten anything you know they wouldn't have their way an inch but the fact that they start s slow, small, and then now they can increment all the way up to this point. So what comes next to both of you? It's a scary question, Alex. You know, I, I wish I was wrong for what comes next. Um, my answers along the way, my 10 years of reporting, journalism, commentary. I wish I was wrong every time I try to warn people of what comes next. But let me tell you, we now have an international both temporal and frankly, as far as I'm concerned, a spiritual war between good and evil. And they are now personified as the nationalists versus the globalists. And the globalists are damn terrified because of organizations like yourself, like where Martina is with the Daily Caller, with the rebel media, with, with the democratization of data that is slowly pulling people from the matrix and saying, hold on a second, we've been lied to, hold on a second, all this do-goodery that we've been saying that we've been doing for the rest of the world is actually having a negative effect on your family, on your community, on your country. And what happens when, when the powerful feel threatened is that they begin to do things like censorship, like taking away the 
those things which make us the little guy, the regular guy, frankly, the mass is powerful. That includes our freedom of speech, our freedom of consciousness, and indeed our right to defend ourselves. And in this case, it's it's to, to bear arms, if you will. So um, what comes after that? Well, if we're impotent, so to speak, to do anything about protecting our our heritage, our present and our children's future, well, then we are giving these guys, uh, uh, again, a wide open field to execute their will. And we've seen what their will oh, is. I totally it's agree. So, so let me ask you both this. We'll come back for a break. Talk more about it. If the end game is absolute tyranny, they're coming after the First Amendment, Second Amendment, right to bear arms all over the world. We see that almost as a negative thing, and it is negative they're doing it. But the fact that we've been so successful, we'll talk about Yellow Vest when we come back and other movements, other nationalist movements, the fact that we've pushed their timetable forward and made them take the velvet glove off, I see that as very, very positive that we force them into their more aggressive actual posture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think that we need to start doing more things like what Faith did, um, you know, is go into like do our own long march into the institutions, get into positions of, of government, try, um, you know, get into uh, educational institutions, start teaching people, the kid children and stuff. Uh, I'm involved in the arts, so we got to get back into arts and culture, Hollywood and all that. So if we can start infiltrating the way that they did back into the institutions, we can gain control again and definitely in government. I mean, just go run for office, do something, do what Faith did, you know? And, and by Thanks the way, even much. though she lost, we're coming about this, she was an international sensation, got bigger than she ever was, showed them censor her, showed all this evil, and it really illustrated what was happening. So if, if people run again and again and again, it will break their back. Resistance is victory. If you lay down, they win. If you keep fighting, you get stronger, they lose. Don't adapt to being oppressed. Fight back against the oppression and defeat it. We're not victims. We're winners. We're victors. You know, part of my problem is, is that I don't want to say I'm too confident. It's not like I'm even punch drunk for being in this fight so long. I just have seen so many times God pull our bacon out of the fire that I almost just get, and I don't want to say even lackadaisical about we're trying to row the ship to shore and there's holes in it and the water's right up to the edge of the top of the boat. We could go under any minute, but I, I'm just confident we're going to make it to shore. Thanks to listeners and viewers' support, understanding we literally are one of the main beacons of truth and justice, relaunching Americana, relaunching uh, your basic human systems of success, relaunching men being men, women being women, and, and, and true free open societies, not the authoritarianism uh, of the globalists. That said, the only way we circumvent their massive censorship is you spreading the word about Infowars.com, Newswars.com, the videos, the articles, the live links. And they want to inoculate everybody psychologically that Infowars is so bad and so evil. So you're afraid to talk to folks. No, that's that's the door in. Like, hey, you've heard about Infowars and the wild stuff they say about it. And yeah, I, I have. Well, did you, did you hear about this? Where George Soros said that we're in a war with China and the U.S. is going to win and that um, Trump's unbeatable. Oh, no, you didn't see that. That was a prospectus to big bankers. Well, Infowars.com has his actual statement. You see, the globalists are losing. And everything they're doing is a rear guard action. It doesn't mean we're offering some cult, drink the you know, vodka and barbiturates and go up to the comet in the sky and everything's going to be perfect. But this current group of globalists, their system is falling apart. So bottom line, folks, we make it easy to support the broadcast. We have the best turmeric. If you don't know what turmeric does for inflammation, your body, your health, the great antioxidant, it's, it's, it's the best thing out there. We have 95% curcuminoid at a price of people that sell at 5% you know, curcuminoid. So Bodies is amazing. Our protein bar is a high-end protein bar, discounted for $3 a piece. They sell for $6, $7 at Whole Foods. Ours is uh, $3 the regular price. It's $2.40 on discount right now. It's an amazing high-quality protein bar. So they'll probably call it snake bars. You know, He sells coffee. He's evil. He sells toothpaste. He's evil. It's all snake bars, snake bars. And Jones selling things is evil. He's trying to make money. Of course I am. I'm in a total war. Most revolutionaries have to rob banks and kidnap people for money. I don't do that. So InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or 888-253-3139. I'm a capitalist. I want to bring you products that blow you away so you keep ordering them. Get TurboForce. Get BrainForce. Still 50% off. That sale was supposed to end, but I've been too busy. This is the last day. New sales uh, will start uh, this weekend. So I'm going to be up here this weekend launching them. 
Whatever you do, take action today. A lot of big sales are about to end. Infowarsstore.com or 888-253-3139. Uh, getting back to our guest, uh, I want to get, get uh, Martina Marcota back on soon. I'm always like, hey, get her on, get her on. But now that they're, 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 they're depersoning her, she's here. I want to invite her back on a routine basis, just like I've invited uh, Faith Goldie back on. But just closing comments about where you see the world going, other things that are on your radar screen. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me again. I'd like to come back anytime. But um, yeah, like I said, I just think that the it's time for phase two. In Comics Gate, we say phase two. So there was a, a point of criticizing um, SJWs and the leftist and, and deconstructing what they're doing and showing how ridiculous it was, which actually really worked because it won us the election. Um, just their ridiculousness and exposing it really shows people how absurd they are. But then there's phase two, which is create, you know, let's build the world that we want to live in. So, um, you know, I think that's what you're doing with some of your products and stuff. You're not just letting them make the products. You're you're making the kind of products you want to live in. And uh, what I do in the arts, I just want to do the arts that I want to do. And Faith is really talented at doing what she does. So she, everyone should just find their skill and their craft and what they have to offer the world and, and push that out and there into the world instead of just being reactionary. And people can find that different, beautiful world you're building at martinamarcota.com. Uh, just amazing work, Martina, and we look forward to speaking to you again very, very soon. Thank you. Bye, Faith. Bye. Faith, what she said is simple, but the simple is the most profound. We can't just be criticized how fallen and pathetic the globalist left is. We have to build that better world, which we're trying to do. I think also we have to be unafraid to be bold and to exert some sort of strength, by which I don't mean I'm not calling for a physical revolution per se, but know that we are on the side of justice and truth and that we are fulfilling the destiny that our forefathers had envisioned when they first planted the seeds of the nations that we now exist in. And to walk boldly, don't let these, these serpents, these lizard people um, bully us into submission, to bully us into thinking that we are these these horrendous names that they call us racist white supremacists all these things are just tools of oppression to keep us uh, quiet to shut us up we have to be bold and proclaim the fact that 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 we are walking in truth that loving your country loving your family all of that is natural all of that is healthy and hating the idea of erasing your borders and moving towards um, more globalization um, is also so okay. So do all of that and do it boldly. Be brave and, and be unafraid. Just because someone calls you a name or, or hurls some mud at you doesn't mean it's your turn to sit down. It's your turn to stiffen up your back, get out the shields and march on. And, and it's not because you're young and beautiful, but you remind me of my dad's mom because she was a strong, smart, powerful woman. It sounded just like you. Where Both my grandmothers were amazing. And I'm not just saying this to be patronizing. I don't see a lot of women that act like you. I don't see a lot of men that act like you. When I was a little kid, it was everywhere. It's like it's dying even in Texas. Well, how are you different? And how many women do you know that are strong like you? Well, you know, I would say that it's it's a mixture of having strong female role models and strong male role models as well in my life. Most specifically, I'd say my mom and my mom always pointing upwards. So when I say, mom, you're the best mom in the world. And she said, it's because the Holy Spirit and God has helped me raise you. So, you know, I would say that if you're raising young girls right now, keep looking up while you're looking down, so to speak, and, and continue to be to be moved by the spirit of truth. Um, and, and quite outside of that, I mean, I have always hungered and thirsted for truth. And here's the thing is that when I was in school, um, the truth, the counterfeit truth that I was sold, um, you know, was shoved down my throat. And so I saw things through a certain lens. And once my mom revealed herself to be a right winger. Um, well, basically, after that moment, I, I was confronted with the fact that right wingers weren't some sort of, you know, knuckle dragging Neanderthals. And so I started engaging with their arguments. And from there, I became more of a conservative. Call me what you will. But but on top of that, um, I don't know. I, I think it's also my love of history, Alex. I, I've read. I know how great our nations are and I know how terrible war 
and, and how terrible enemies of the good can be. I'm very, very acutely aware that we're closer than we think to our ancestors and those who came before us. And I'll be damned if we're going to make the same mistakes. Uh, I'll be damned if we're going to squander their legacies. Um, so, so I suppose it's some of that. I'm very. I think the bottom line is you're connected to God, and, and it goes right through your ancestors. They were connected, and you are literally. You don't have GPS. You've got the Holy Spirit. If people don't understand that, you're not going to find it in these fake churches. You're going to feel the spirit of evil. It's a fake, you know, glad handing. Everything's great spirit. But no, no. I mean, the real Holy Spirit drives you, pushes you to do things, gives you great insights. Uh, but it's 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 a real adventure. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And, and we need to pray for better politicians and we have to pray for the spirit of God to sweep our nations. Pray for your nations to be protected and then continue to act. You know, it's one thing. Some people are called to contemplative lives. And if that's you, that's fine. But if that's not you, then don't just sit behind a keyboard. Get out there. Talk to your families about the truth. Tell them about Infowars. Talk to your church groups. Find a church group. You know, uh, start uh, some activism, even postering campaigns. Help wake people people up do your part we're gonna do one more segment when we come back we're a minute and a half out till break but just you, you brought up so many points we talked off air yellow vest you're very excited about they're like 15 weeks in they're getting mm -hmm. killed and that, uh, it's just like venezuela it's incredible yeah, absolutely. This is in a democratic nation and we've got police literally firing on um, people trying to execute their democratic, exercise their democratic rights. And now uh, it's a globalist worst nightmare. Contagion. It's spreading across the globe to places like Canada. And I'm looking forward to telling you a little bit about that movement here in Canada, how it's mutated and manifested and how we're bringing this movement right to the front steps of our legislature in Ottawa. We still got 40 seconds, but, but so so it's definitely in Canada now. Oh, 100%. And it's so interesting. Like There are a couple people who are sort of against it because we don't have the same history of yellow vests and you need to keep them in their tanks, uh, our trunks, etc. But it is it is symbolic of the fact that we are brothers fighting the same war, even though there are uh, oceans that separate us. And, and, and so I think you're hinting at the French contingent from Montreal. Is that part of the... the, the, the solidarity with with uh, france montreal toronto ottawa vancouver it's sweeping the nation we'll be right back with faith goldie and more the third hour stay with us faith goldie is with us for a few more minutes we've got the state rep in studio with Stuart rhodes who's introduced the legislation in texas for texas to fund our own wall that's coming up Faith, you were getting into the yellow vest exploding across uh, not just Canada, but other parts of the world. A truly beautiful nationalist movement against carbon taxes, against globalism, against open borders. But 15, 14 weeks, how many weeks were into this? The corporate media still hides who they really are. That's exactly right. And we're seeing that trend again cross international borders. So the same way that we saw in France, the international media there saying it's all about a fuel tax. It's all about a gas tax. That's all that's happening. Macron walks back on the gas tank. And what do you know? These people continue to stand on the streets, march on the streets. And in fact, their numbers grow. Well, this past week here in Canada, we had our own United We Roll um, convoy for Canada. Huge trucks come in thousands and thousands of a mile from our far west uh, and our far east into central Canada, into the seat of power of Ottawa, where Justin Trudeau is. And their message was simple. No more UN migrant compact. We don't believe that you should be able to migrate to any country for any reason and that be declared a human right. No more open borders. Justin Trudeau erased our southern boundary without a democratic uh, mandate. No more carbon tax. This tax on literal pixie dust it's, it's, it's socialism okay and more pipelines we don't want to be buying oil from all these dirty nations that beat their women and make them have male guardianships like saudi arabia we got our own oil underneath this beautiful country drill baby drill and what does the the, the mainstream media the corporate media do here in canada uh, they say that it's all about pipelines well of course they do because we can talk about the economics but god forbid that we talk about the bigger issues um that our country right now is frankly being evaded, invaded rather by design by the globalists. And so it was amazing for me and in a way um, uh, kind of frightening to see these guys grassroots from all over the country come together, organize this. I mean, there was no one leader. There was no one group. It was just a bunch of normal people. Truly organic, together. not synthetic. Yes. The opposite of AstroTurf.
Yes, absolutely. And and their their message was loud and clear along the side of their 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 trucks and their buses. And the media was just like uh, with a whiteout going through and just saying, we're going to highlight these parts and censor these other parts. Faith, let me ask you this question. I want to have you back soon just to get into this for a whole hour because it's so incredible. I think they run the risk of saying the French's back was broken, so they pushed it as the vanguard of globalist social engineering, and then it blew up biggest. I see the attempt to crush and dominate nice, friendly, hard hardworking, great Canadians of every race, color, and creed, I think Canada could be the next big detonator in this because they're pushing you guys so hard. Yeah, people don't realize that Canada is the canary in the coal mine. We seem like, you know, the kind of uh, lame brothers to the north, maybe. But we are actually the country right now facing the fastest rate of ethnic change globally. We also have the highest per capita immigration rate globally, actually twice that of the United States. And our illegal numbers are way, way high as a percentage of our population as well. This all coming, I'll be putting out a report pretty soon. As you look at the people who are running our country and a huge percentage are actually people who weren't even born here. So it goes to show you um, that we're basically letting the foxes in charge of the hen house over here. And at a certain point, we like Canucks are going to start to push back. Don't forget, we're the ones who know how to uh, cross check properly in, in the good old hockey game. So um, I think that they continue to push us. They can be darn sure that we're going to be pushing back. And this week was just the very first domino in the line. And again, immigration will work fine if people were brought in the melting pot, but they're being indoctrinated to hate Western nations when they're brought in and people are aware of it. Faith Goldie, you are in fuego. You're awesome. People should follow you right now at Faith Goldie. Look forward to having you and your husband fly down to Austin to go host whenever you want. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Thank you. Kyle Biederman, state rep here in the great state of Texas, is in studio with us. Stuart Rhodes, founder of Oath Keepers, and of course, a Yale graduate in law and a great patriot is here with us as well, oathkeepers.org. Kyle is at KyleBiederman.com, and I appreciate you coming in because you were all over the news in the last week for introducing a, a legislation here in the great state of Texas uh, to uh, build our own wall. I guess we're the biggest part of the 2,200-mile uh, uh, border and all the studies, as you know, a, a, a cut crime putting in a wall, plus it's constitutional. And, and I love this idea of having the state do it to just kind of take Take things, because you know, I mean, you know I'm a states' rights guy. Yeah. I think Trump would support us. So thanks for coming in and tell us about the plan. Well, Alex, great to be here. And uh, uh, what, a, what a privilege to be able to talk to people that really do care. I mean, when you're at the Capitol, um, you're talking to people that have no guts. They have no courage. And they just want to pass things off. They want to kick the can. So being here to talk to you, knowing that you really care and that you've got people out there listening that really do care and are going to listen and try to help. But um, I'm glad you say that. The power of the show is the audience. Yes. I mean, they're it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly true. And the power for me are my constituents. And so, in fact, today um, on uh, Texas Tribune, they're talking about how the border is not that important for the state of Texas and for the people of Texas. And yet they just came out with a um, with a poll, Texas Tribune and the University of Texas, which, you know, two not very conservative outfits. And the number one concern for the people of Texas, the number one concern for the people of Texas is illegal immigration. Number two is border security. And then number three is not even education. Yet that is what we're talking about. This whole session is education. But the number one and two of the people is not what we're talking about. So obviously at the legislature, uh, we don't have priorities where the people feel the priority is for Texas. And so that's why it's so important for somebody to stand up and have the courage to speak out and say, this is the priority of the people of Texas. This is who we represent. And if we don't get this done, um, they're going to come after us. And I I hope they do. But uh, well, Let's talk about the logistics of that because it's in the Constitution. And we talk about a wall, it doesn't need to be everywhere, but these in these key areas, we know it just stops the massive smuggling, the, you know, the human traffic, people pouring across the border. Yep. So, so as, a, as a representative here in Texas, describe what your constituents are telling you, what the Border Patrol is telling you, what the, what the state police are telling you. People don't understand. Texas is right on the area with the most failed area of Mexico and just the level of carnage we're talking about. Well, you're exactly right. And, you know, Texas has actually spent almost $4 billion of the taxpayers' money over the last eight years on border security, but we really didn't get border security. We just sent our law enforcement, our DPS, down to the border to catch and release and hand them over to ICE. And so we didn't really get much for our money. So under Obama, they just became delivery people 
for illegal aliens. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so what we're doing is pointing out the fact that if we're going to put another billion dollars in this session, which we will be, uh, 800 million for sure, uh, what are we going to get for that? We're going to, again, send down our border security, send down, I mean, our DPS, send down our law. As high-priced taxi right. drivers. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, and that's a shame. So we need to, as Texas, we're the ones that are paying the penalty. We're the ones that are paying the penalty for for drugs coming into the country, for human trafficking, for our education system, our jails, our prisons are all being taxed. Because and I mean, we know this. that the U.N. is funding the breakdown of national sovereignty. They go, oh, conspiracy theory. That's yeah. their own statement. And I think if we don't address the real crisis, people don't get what this is about. It's about breaking our borders. That's exactly right. And, you know, with our broken borders, it's not just Texas. It's the rest of the country. So with our bill that's come out and, of course, with a lot of the publicity we've gotten, uh, there are actually other states that are saying we want help. And so part of our bill is to have an area, an, uh, an opportunity to get gifts and funding from other sources, other people, and of course, other states. Oh, that's beautiful because states can look at their budget and tell illegal aliens, anchor babies, the criminal cost is tens of billions, even for smaller states. They know that, hey, that'll help. You better believe it because they're paying the penalty for us not securing our border. But, you know, the big thing is, most people say, oh, it's a federal issue, so the states need to stay out of it. Well, when you've got a broken federal government that hasn't done any, what they're supposed to be doing for all these years, the states have to take over. And that's all right. Well, so Representative, important. thanks for introducing this bill. Let's come back and talk about on the other side and, and, and the real cost of open borders with a failed third world nation. We'll be right back. Stay with us. State Representative Biederman is here in studio with us. And I appreciate him joining us with Stuart Rhodes. I remember back when we were exposing the TSA groping of children, which they then backed off of. We got it to pass in the House, but not in the Senate. Regardless, though, this can really catch wildfire if people get involved, they get excited. You were telling me during the break something huge we'll talk about at the end of the segment and then cover next segment that's as big as this or even bigger about them trying to turn the state blue. Uh, but Representative uh, uh, Biederman, please continue with your move, your bill to uh, help the feds build the wall and how that would work. Well, first of all, we've got to um, find out where the funding is going to come from for the state of Texas. So we have a, a large uh, rainy day fund. Uh, we've got plenty of money in there. The problem with that is it takes two thirds of a vote on the House floor. And so the chairman of our Homeland Security Committee has already said that even if the bill comes, there's not going to be 100 votes because you've got 67 um, Democrats and they'll vote in a block. So it's going to be difficult to get it passed with the rainy day fund. So we're looking at other ways to be able to fund this. But the important thing about the bill is it's not just for wall. It's going to be for infrastructure. It's going to be for technology. It'll be for um, watershed clearing of the brush so that we can use surveillance. It's going to be for roads, uh, just a number of things that need to be done on the border. And the, the point is that's not being done right now because of the, of the, uh, of the inability of the federal government to even move on any of those projects. And let's be clear, Mexico has incredible culture. I like going down there, it has great food, great yeah. beaches, great people. I love Mexicans, seriously, I mean, yeah. I do. Uh, but I was just down there for four or five days with my wife. But even the safer places now are dangerous. While I was there, there were five people killed one day, two people killed the next, one killed the next day. I was in Cancun. And I was like, wow, I actually shouldn't come down here. It really is that dangerous now. The 200,000 dead the last decade, hundreds of thousands missing, heads being chopped off, a failed state, the smugglers, the coyotes, all this is going on. Obviously, the UN and others know the weakness of Europe, the weakness of the US is our openness. They're running programs. They're saying no borders, no walls, no USA at all, that they want to overwhelm our courts, overwhelm the Border Patrol and collapse us. This is a clear and present, bona fide, clear danger to the nation, Stuart. And you're a military guy, constitutional lawyer in your own right. You've worked in Congress for Ron Paul. I mean, obviously Trump's emergency is totally constitutional, but you're right. Why did he go the 1976 route where it's just for law enforcement? No, as commander in chief, he doesn't need any of this. It's the damn border. Yeah, and, and I strongly encourage, we want to encourage Governor Abbott to step up as the commander of the military forces in Texas, the right. Texas National Guard and your state guard, which is called the, uh, the uh, Texas Guard. By the way, that wouldn't just be popular, it'd be the duty. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the right thing to do. And and also to back the bill to to um, fund the wall. As he said earlier, he spent $4 billion over the last eight years. That's right. So you mm -hmm. could, they could have built the wall already with Texas money. That's exactly so right. So it's kind of silly for the governor. I, I mean, it looks good, but he's sending these DPS officers down there 
And I went and talked to two of them this last week when we were there on the, on the Rio Grande and Eagle Pass. And they said, well, you know, I said, what are you going to do if someone waves ashore? Call Border Patrol. We're not actually going to do anything. Oh, because the that. law is broken. The right. federal law is broken. So even when we're down there, that's what's going to be so difficult, difficult about this bill is we have to be able to build something. So we need to be able to just be able to build something on the wall and start getting our own technology and our own uh, surveillance down there because the laws are still so bad. As long as you can get over the border and you give it, give yourself up, then you're in the political process. That's what the whole... So Trump's right. We have to put up that first offense. Mm -hmm. Where we do, we have to put up... Well, look what's happened in Eagle Pass. When that caravan came up, we only let 15 or so people in at a time or groups to be able to um, go through the process of um, finding out if they truly are here for um, uh, to uh, flee their country. And so uh, the rest were sitting in the detention center. And Mexico gave them visas to stay in Mexico to get jobs. And since it's taken so long, they're starting to go back into Mexico or other places or go back home. And you got to remember, this is not just Mexicans. This is OTM other than Mexicans. And over 65% are from other countries. And so Mexico is now... Um, being forced, I believe, by the Trump administration, which is a great thing, to take responsibility for the other countries coming through their country before they come to the United States. And look what's happened. It has stopped that. Over in California, that was a total mess. They were actually, um, you know, trying to break through the barriers. That didn't happen in Eagle Pass because the Mexican government was actually um, holding and detaining them on the Mexican side. And that was that was the that was just one of the best things. So people think, oh well, Trump said he's going to have Mexico pay for the wall. Uh, well, Mexico is paying a lot right now by keeping those people in Mexico. Yeah, well, they, what is, but they bust them all the way from their southern border all the way up there, though. The oh, same Mexican of course. government. I right? know, but at least we kept them right there in Mexico, and those detention centers are actually starting to um, thin out. Because people aren't don't sure. What do you think of the Democrats before the so-called deal got made, saying cap beds at sixteen thousand five hundred when it fluctuates between forty thousand, hundred thousand people in any one month coming in? They literally don't want judges. They don't want anything. They just want nothing. Totally open. Well, they want they want the optics of showing. Look, we don't have enough beds, and these people are are sick to create the bum guy. rush. They want to advertise just like Europe. Yeah. There's no border. That's exactly right. But they also want to have all they want is the um the message all they want is the optics of look this is a uh, humanitarian crisis so we have to let them in in fact we had legislators uh in this in texas that live on the border saying that they have people coming across the river and then these people these legislators will help them break the law to be able to go find border security so they can turn themselves in I mean, well, I was say, hanging out. No one comes across the border except the. I was country. hanging out with a major, um, a Mexican police chief from a major city. And he said it's a total joke. Of course, you've got to have some type of papers to cross the border. Of course, you've got to have beds. He goes, we're, he goes, you think Mexico's bad? Guatemala's collapsing into us, and our president is saying basically open the borders up. That's right. So they're trying to collapse Mexico, too. Uh -huh. I mean, this is like insane. Well, I mean, yeah. notice Brazil closed its borders months ago to Venezuela. It's a failed state. Right. When you're next door to a failed state, you better damn well close your border. Well, this is what's so great about Trump. When you stand up and you stand up against these things, Mexico is going to start feeling the heat. The other countries have felt the heat and they'll start doing their job. They're, right. they're using board. us as a steam valve. Right. Sure. Exactly. And that's uh, that's exactly what's been happening. Now, we're about to go to break, uh, state rep here. But drop the bombshell when we come back. I know they're trying to pull out all the monuments to get rid of history. But they they now want the Alamo torn down. Wow. We'll talk about it when we come back. <laughs> okay. Wow, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible stuff. Stuart Rhodes here in studio uh, with us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Representative, what is the best place, uh, Kyle, for folks to, to uh, find what you're doing? Well, they can go to my uh, website, kylebiederman.com. Um, obviously, they can just go to my website at the Capitol. So at the Capitol, you just go to the switchboard, ask for State Representative Kyle Biederman, and you can get right to uh, email to us. And, that's and the biggest the thing is they should contact the governor. They should con wrestle, they get behind this bill right now. Texas needs to take action. That's right. That's right. They, without, the, without the governor and the lieutenant governor on board, they're the ones that really make the decision on what's happening. And they've been talking to the Trump administration, so it's not that they don't know what's going on. It just comes down to leadership. people. It comes down to leadership. We'll be right back. Stay with us. As Texas goes, so goes the nation. 
the entire globalist leftist Chicom funded combine <laughs> is trying to bring down this state. Great state rep Kyle Bierderman is our guest in studio with our good buddy Stuart Rhodes has been co-hosting all week. We're going to get back to this in a moment, but i got to play this clip. This happened minutes ago on Fox News with this uh, Al-Qaeda woman, uh, ISIS woman, that married an ISIS fighter five years ago, went over there, worked with this guy on record, admits it, and now wants to come back here. Oh, my God. Then take your damn hijab off. Okay, and your stupid nose ring trying to look like the you know the state rep or that congresswoman. The administration says she's a terrorist and cannot re-enter the country, but she insists that she belongs here. First, and, and I know, in fact, that I was a citizen. And when I tried filing for a passport, it was very easy. It came in 10 days. So I thought I didn't have a problem. And I'm sure there's no problem. And I know my lawyer hopefully is working on it and he will win the case. What do you want to do if you went back to the States? What do you think will happen to you if you were to um, allowed to go back? Of course, I'll be given jail time. John, you as the Deputy Assistant Attorney General. Under okay, so listen, you left Alabama to go fight with your husband who was in uh, I I ISIS, and that's all admitted, and now you want to come. No, 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 stay in your wonderland. <laughs> And that's all I'm saying is that if you're a Muslim that loves America and, and this is all great, stay here. We love you. But if you want to go join ISIS, be in all this, and now you're bitching that we won't let you back in, wearing your hijab, sitting there. Uh, I don't want to get you to wait in on this. You're trying to get a border wall built <laughs> to protect the state. But this is getting crazy. It, I mean, it's definitely getting crazy. In fact, um, we've got a, a, some legislation f about the uh, radical Islam, uh, Islam, um, um, you know, Answer. care, care. So you got the Council of American Islamic Relations, and they're basically a Hamas group, a uh, Muslim Brotherhood, and yet they're allowed to come to the capital and be infiltrating into all different areas of the United States government as well as the Texas government. So oh, oh, they're taking my bank accounts away. No one ever touches CARES bank accounts right. who's been directly caught giving money to Hamas. So we're we're uh we're in on that too, but we have so much to try to get done right now in the and so No, no, I understand. Focus. You're focused on yep. the border. Yep. So so let's get into the big enchilada. Okay. People say, okay, they're gonna pull down Davy Crockett's statue, they're gonna pull down Sam Houston's uh statue, you know, he was against uh, having the Civil War. These people don't know jack crap. Mm -hmm. They just say they're alive during this period. Well, slavery's still going on in Africa. That's right. well, we're going to blow Africa up? The Middle East and, and Somalia, they're selling women in sex slavery every day at sex markets. Oh, but no leftist cares about that because Jeffrey or, or Jesse Smollett doesn't care. But tell us about your bill to stop pulling down the monuments because they're now, as you warned, targeting the Alamo. That's exactly right. So I actually have two bills because it's so important that we protect the shrine of Texas, which is the Alamo. And so I'll start with that bill real quick. Basically, it's a fight between the state of Texas and the city of San Antonio. The city of San Antonio wants to remove the cenotaph, uh, the, the empty tomb for our defenders that died and shed their blood on that spot. And then Santa Ana dragged them four blocks away, burned their bodies. So there would not be a proper burial, so there wouldn't be a remembrance of our defenders. And then 100 years later, on the centennial of... So they want to complete, let's explain that. Yep. They want to complete Santa Ana's operation. That's exactly right. Who was yep. aided in Mexico, lost Guatemala, mm -hmm. and was later deposed. That's exactly right. So that city of San Antonio wants then to tell the 300 years of history on the Alamo battlefield, where the battle was just part of it. OK, the state of Texas should be going against that. But unfortunately, our general land office headed by Chairman Bush uh, is allowing this to happen because they want to deal so badly with San Antonio uh, to have this re envision the, the Alamo. What the hell's wrong with San Antonio? <clears throat> you know, well, look what San Antonio has done for the Alamo since, the, you know, for the last 150 years. They have just. They were supposed to maintain the uh, the uh, cenotaph. They haven't. They let for, until buildings. like sixty years ago. It was a warehouse. Right. They let all these buildings encroach on it, and then they they wonder why is it why is it not a um, why is it looked the way it does? Well, San Antonio did it to themselves, you know. And so right now they're expecting the state of Texas to fund them so they could make it a bigger attraction. Why would they want to get rid of something that's such an attraction in the name of making an attraction? Well, because it's already an attraction. It's one of the number one. So people are going to come. So now San Antonio wants to put their political correctness on that site and bring in the indigenous Indians, uh, bring in actually tributes to Mexico because we were so mean to, to defeat them and take the defenders who died for our state that gave us our independence out 500 feet away and put them in the free speech area 
where San Antonio owns that land. And the battlefield will then be uh, a place to tell the hundred, the 300 years of history instead so that they can have a bigger attraction with the other five missions. They also want to be on, on a, a, a um, just purely a mission, part of the World Heritage System under the UN. Under the UN. And well, let's expand on that. This shows the average Texan, whether it be black, white, Hispanic, who's a patriot, is arrogant and thinks Texas is patriot, is red, as if the Republicans are perfect. Mm -hmm. They don't get, the Democrats have looked at the demographics, the brainwashing, they think they're about to take it. And if you look at all the Beto lost, but he won a bunch of uh, uh, the courts, you name it. Mm -hmm. We're uh, California 30 years ago was more right wing than Texas. Texas That's better true. wake the hell up, man. I'm sick of this crap. Boy, we are so close to committing suicide. Boy, that is so true. I mean, that is more than true. I mean, in the Capitol right now, that is so true. We see California turned. It took a number of years. We turned really quickly this last election, and they're looking at ta taking over the House next election if we don't really get our get our act together. And here it is on the World Heritage Site. So the GLO says the UN will have nothing to do with the uh, Alamo. They'll be they won't have any management. They won't have any oversight of the of the Alamo. And that is true because the World Heritage Organization does not manage any sites. They just lay the guidelines down. If you want to be a World Heritage Site and be a designation for that, you have to follow their political correctness, sanitation. Which gives history. control of the whole region to them. It's a right. And so the, the lease that we signed, where we don't own the land any, we don't own the land in between the Alamo. So don't the, you agree with what the land commissioner earlier, when, when he said we shouldn't let Leave this to the, the, the Daughters of the Republic, even though my mom and her grandma were involved. We need to take it away and have the state run it. Well, we needed more funding into it, okay? So that's the problem. The, the Daughters didn't have the funding, and they did a great job. Without them, we wouldn't even have the Alamo. No, I agree. Yeah, you're right. But, uh, They're the that, ones that went and got it. That's exactly right. They're the ones that saved it, okay? But the point is, the, the state of Texas can do a great job there. But the problem is they're trying to... Um, so what needs to happen? What needs to happen to save the Alamo? Oh my God! If we can't even protect like a 300 sanctuary uh, you know, shrine, what can we do? So my monument bills to stop any monuments from being moved that are over 20 years old. Uh, if you do, you've got to have a vote of two thirds of the well, people. Make them a heritage site. Well, not under the UN, but just under Texas. Well, we're. I'm telling you, historical site. Well, we don't trust the Texas Historical Commission either, so we got to be careful who we give it to. Right now, we have to protect it by not allowing it to be moved, but we also are going to do imminent domain and take over the land that San Antonio on, owns in front of the Alamo. The Alamo. Well, that's imminent domain I would support. The state right. needs to take over the Alamo. I mean, that is ours. It was supposed to be given to the state of Texas, but San Antonio decided to give a long-term lease, and the GLO accepted it. So in that long-term lease, we cannot jeopardize the designation of a world heritage. State rep here... Uh Berdeman, I love what you're doing, but I don't want to cuss on air, but I call it the chicken, you know what, dimension. <laughs> I mean, how could someone want to piss on the Alamo when it already makes San Antonio hundreds of millions a year? Probably more. I mean, wh why? Cultural why? war. Well, it's cultural war. Because if you can take that down 170, 80 years later, you means you're winning. Right. It's a cultural war. You're exactly right, Stuart. But it's also a lot. Of, it's all about money. I mean, it's going to be a lot of money, huge contracts, a foundation, <laughs> Um, you know, it's hard to follow the money because there's so many different bank accounts and they're not, uh, they're, they're not able to be looked at by the, well, let's talk about what are some of the other monuments they've already torn down? Well, how about what's going on in Dallas right now? The city council and the mayor are debating on taking down one of the, um, uh, one of the, uh, civil war monuments. But their question is, do we wrecking ball it or we become more humane and take it down piece by piece? I mean, this is getting sick. And there's no voice by the people. It's just the local officials making this decision. And that's where we have to stop. And now Google says get rid of the, get rid of the term mother and father. And there's no, <laughs> there's no end to what the, the, the controlled left wants to wrecking ball. We'll be right back with a plan to build a wall to defend Texas, launched by Texas straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com, Newswars.com. Spread those links. It's an act of rebellion. State Rep. Kyle Biederman is here with us. He's introduced the bill that's moving forward with your support for Texas to fund building its own section of wall that would save a lot of money. Yep. But you dropped a bombshell on me there on the break. It's not just they're trying to take over the Alamo. They're actually wanting to fly a Mexican flag over it. Tell us about that. Well, you got to realize who's running San Antonio. You've got the Castro brothers and, of course, their whole family. And they're the ones that got started on this re envision re re-envision the Alamo. They, they, they brought it up because it's been talked about for years, but they're the ones that really got it going. And of course, that would be uh, their ideal. And it's been talked about right now to move the 
the uh, the uh, cenotaph, which is the Defenders Monument, and then put in a statue of Indigenous Indian chief, uh, and then you know a statue of uh, maybe William Travis, maybe, and then of course grave sites for the Indigenous Indians, and then um, tributes to the Mexican Army, and it has been spoken about, and so I, I just can't make these things up. This is where we're heading. And when you look at the leadership of San Antonio, that will give you the reason why it's heading that direction. But it's so pissant. Why not just embrace Texas history? That's why don't liberals do that? Why do they always want to tear down our values and principles? Because they're, they, they need to tear down Christianity because that gets rid of morals. And without morals, they could do what they want. Why don't we build a statue to Jesse Smollett? <laughs> I, I, I'm sure they would probably do that before they would want to have a statue of some more of the defenders. And that is what is so sad. Again, it was the white people. Unfortunately, we're the ones that are bad. And so whatever they need to do to, to take us down is well, what Let me ask do. this, because, again, it's not people that are brown or whatever that are bad. It's, it's the leadership of the globalist. I mean, Stuart, you know, you're, you know your mom's side of the family from Mexico, great right. people. But... We have to stop getting into the, the, this thing that we're bad because we're white. Why does everybody want to get into a white-run country so fast? Well, I, I look at my family. My family's been from the border for over 100 years. And again, my wife is Hispanic and her whole family. Um, the problem is, is the messaging that has been got, given to, especially the Hispanic community, is not, they are a, 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 a culture of values and principles of Christianity of, of their Catholic church and their Catholic principles, which would be pro-life. And yet they're voting for abortion. So it is just, In fact, that's how they say Beto, despite all his fraud was barely beaten enough. Hispanics called their family and said, you know, he's for partial birth abortion. Mm -hmm. He is. And you know, how could you vote for that? Because you vote for it because the leaders have been telling you what to do. And, and so the answer is, as Americans, no matter what color we are, we've not been doing our job getting the word out about the Democrats. That's exactly The right. average Texan sits there on their ass, myself, like, oh, Texas is fine. No, we've almost lost Texas, folks, just like California. So next time you look down on France or look down on California or look down on wherever, remember, they were once free too. Well, you know, uh, being conservative was one thing. It all comes from leadership, as you said earlier. What is the leadership? And if our leadership is not going to stand for Texas, then that's how it'll fall. And if you want to try to play it safe and you want to try to, you know, you know, kind of deny what's really happening so that you can be popular, uh, that's where the problem's Well, let me be. tell this big secret. You're going to get demonized. We're coming on tomorrow. But any smart constituent's going to think that's a good thing. The, the establishment Republican Party grovels to corporate media when it has no power. Only the power we give it. I'm not a big Roosevelt fan. I like some of what he did. Shout the Nazis. But the only fear we have is fear itself. It's that last illusion. Mm -hmm. That's all there is. There is no power there. We just have to stop giving them the power. Oh, my gosh. If I stand up for not sexualizing children or if I stand up against, you know, big pharma pushing, you know, hardcore drugs on kids, I'm going to be demonized. Good. You want to be attacked by bad guys. Why the hell are we so afraid? Well, you know, and as in the poll I just gave you earlier in the show, where the number one and number two most important issues to the state of Texas by the constituents in Texas is illegal immigration and border security. And we need our governor to put those priorities first. And that's why it's going to be so important what Stewart's going to be doing down at the border, where we can announce that we would like or we demand that our leadership, our leader in the state of Texas, uh, Governor Abbott, to stand for Trump. Oh, I mean, how, how popular would Abbott be if he called for a bill of a $5 surcharge on every driver's license to build the wall? Mm -hmm. Texas would rush to do it, uh, Stuart. Yeah, well, Governor Abbott needs to take the lead. He's, he's in the hot seat. He needs to declare an emergency in Texas, which will bolster President Trump and give him some support. I don't know why Abbott's been silent. He needs to step up and be the leader of Texas and support uh, Kyle Biederman's bill. Well, and build the wall. That's exactly right. And, and if they take a poll, which I know they are, and they may not want to, you know, acknowledge it, but the poll is the people want border security and they want illegal immigration to Has stop. Has Trump chimed in on what you're doing yet? Well, we're trying to get him to chime in here. He has spoken to Governor Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Patrick. He has spoken to them. But again, um, you know, it's, we need to, we, it's, it's up to us. It's not up to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is doing everything well, again, he can in the federal And I love government. Mexico, but it's not like we're on the border with Switzerland. Uh -huh. I mean, and, and even rich countries have borders for a reason. Criminals are coming across. 
the idea that we can't have any borders, any walls, no USA at all, that's what this is about. And I've said it, and Lou Dobbs talked about it, and they said, oh, you know, basically kick him off air. We need to criminally charge the people that are transferring State Department money to Soros to fund these caravans in the attempt to break our immigration system. Our lenient system has only invited people to exploit it. And Stuart, why do you think they want to totally break the border? Well, it's, it's obvious. They want to take over the United States um, with people they believe will vote their way. And, you know, the Mexican Tejanos who fought at the Alamo and all their descendants are flag-waving patriotic Americans, too. I saw them down at the El Paso rally, at Trump's rally. About a quarter of the audience were Hispanic Americans. So it's not a racial issue, but it is a cultural issue. Mm -hmm. They want to flood us with people in larger capacities than we can assimilate. Um, and also condition them not to assimilate. You said earlier, the new model is a salad bowl, supposedly. Don't assimilate, fly your own flag. That's just, that, won't, that won't work. If they're not going to come here, as Teddy Roosevelt. If your old flag was so good, why the hell are you coming here? Right. And as Teddy Roosevelt said, if you come here and assimilate, then you're an American. Well, we have an obligation and duty, and we'd be proud to accept you. And if you refuse to assimilate, you don't belong here. Well, I believe that the, the Hispanic. Um, population wants to assimilate, wants to be called Americans, except that they are getting brainwashed. No, there's no they're leadership. Pressured. They're getting pressured by the, um, you know, the the liberal leadership, the liberal the media the liberal leaders. And so, the media. so you're saying there's no leadership. That's well, that's correct. Was well, well, they have no, they have great leadership from, from the other the side. Law. I'm saying there's from no oppositional. Side. Right, you're exactly right. It's All right, Representative. How do people follow what you're doing? How do they get involved? How do they get the governor and others to to promote this? Well. The governor, you have to call the governor. You just got to flood his phone lines and let him know what you feel about the about the border security issue and about illegal immigration, and that that should be the number one priority here in the state of Texas, and that we need to support Donald Trump. And he needs to declare an emergency in Texas mm -hmm. and support your bill. That's exactly right. right. And again, everyone gets so bent out of shape that oh, it's a wall. Well, we're not going to have a wall on the whole border for a thousand. We need to get on the offense and have Beto declared as a traitor. And all the leftist groups in the UN, we need indictments. We need the state police, the Texas Rangers, kicking down their doors when Beto says, I got 2,000 more in today. We just put up with this open globalist invasion. It's time to take out the brass knuckles politically or roll over and die. It's that simple. Victory or death, to quote Colonel Travis. Well, and you say, you know, again, work on this Alamo bill. When I take the quotes from Colonel, Colonel Travis, you take the quotes from uh, um, Juan Seguin and other people that were at the Alamo, it, it, you know, they knew what was going to happen. They knew what the future was going to be if and, we did not keep that. And notice, everybody's racing to get away from what Santa Ana set up to what Colonel Travis set up. Because mm -hmm. that was what was honorable. We're not perfect, but you know what? You got your land here. You got decent start. There's not cartels running your life. Right. Because people are willing to die for that. Right. And you read what these men said back then. And how could you do what you're doing today by allowing, you know, desecrating the, the Alamo when these people, if they were alive, they got to be rolling in their graves. This has got to be so upsetting to them. Cartels are worse than Santa Ana. Yeah. They're worse than Santa Ana. He yeah. was nice compared, compared to the cartels. But the left worships a dictator. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just like they worship, you know, you've got all these news articles where the left is worshiping, uh, where you got Bernie Sanders loving Fidel Castro. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, God, he's such a... Such a monster. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. We'd like to have you back on well, as this progresses. And Stuart, thanks for coming in. We've got the next hour coming up. We've got a bunch of guest hosts coming on. We've got Tom Pappert, man, just one of our TV stations we're on. i got to say one more thing. Oh. Can I just mention that, that next Saturday, March 2nd, and Sunday, March the 3rd, we'll be down on the border, and he'll be with us down there. That's right. You better believe it. That's right in the backyard of our chairman of uh, Homeland Security. But i got to tell you also, it is a spiritual battle. This whole thing is a spiritual battle. We need you to pray. We need you to make phone calls. Uh, we need all the support we can get. And God bless you all, and God bless Texas. All right, great job, Representative. Powerful. Stuart, you're bringing up the red flag laws. You know, those are the next big shoot drop. Right. Beyond taking conservatives' bank accounts away, we've put up with a hell of a lot, and we have green-lighted everything that's happening to us right now. Well, you got a red flag law bill coming right up here in Texas. And as uh, Cal Bean was just telling me on the break, you've got uh, Pancho Navarra in charge of your Homeland Security Committee, a Democrat, anti-gun Democrat. It's a Trojan horse right there in the legislature in charge. He'll be the one that'll put the bill up, and with, the, with his clout and authority of being the Homeland Security Chairman, They'll say this is necessary for the security of Texas. But explain what a red flag law is. What a red flag law is, it's really a gun confiscation law. 
Gun Owners America is correct. It's all about individualized gun confiscation. I mean, picture the, the worst case scenario for, for gun owners is mass confiscation, right? Well, well, we'll rise up and fight back. This is the worst case scenario for an individual gun owner that someone is smeared without you knowing it. They go to a judge in secret. You don't even know what's happening. In a secret ex parte hearing, they accuse you of being a danger to the community. They might trot out your social media history, for example, or your bumper stickers or your political affiliations. You don't even know what's happening. You can't confront your accusers. You can't pre present witnesses on your behalf. You don't get a jury trial in front of some leftist judge. Then they decide they're going to come take your guns. The judge gives the order to the police. The police come to your door. And that's when you first know there's any problem at all when the cops are knocking on your door. It's legalized swatting. You know, you call the police and say this guy's a threat. You get a SWAT team to raid his house. That's what it is. So it's like the Baker Act, but on steroids. And instead of getting out in a couple of days for no reason, your guns are gone. Exactly. And it already had a death in Maryland. A man was his, his, his uh, he had, a, he had an argument with his adult sister who doesn't even live with him. And she called the cops to get revenge on him for the argument. They came to his door and he made a false move. Didn't do what they told him to do. They killed him. Well, I remember like three years ago, it was Bloomberg headlines. Gun confiscation begins in California. You go, wait, they're admitting their plan. They've gone from denying it now to admitting it. And it was like, oh, somebody thought this guy was mentally ill. We took the gun. But then you've got this guy at the Illinois plant. 20 years couldn't own a gun. He got one, went and killed people. They didn't put it in the database. So, again, they don't even put real people like the guy a few years ago at the Texas church had been in a military mental institution, adjudicated crazy, couldn't own a gun, had one. Right. Still went and bought it, wasn't in the database. So the feds don't put it in the database when you've been adjudicated crazy. But now they're just going to randomly say, oh, well, if your neighbor thinks you're nuts, we take your guns. Exactly. And there's a federal bill coming through. Um, Lindsey Graham's proposing it. And you've got, uh, what's his name out of, out of Florida? I'm drawing a blank now. Deutsch. No, the, the Cuban. Rubio. Rubio. Rubio's co-sponsors. you got Republicans at the national level pushing these, these red flag bills as well. Because it the, sounds good. Oh, we're going to get rid of the crazy people. Right. Oh, yeah. No one, no one who's a uh, danger to community should, should have a gun. And unfortunately, the Trump administration so far has supported them, and his new attorney general supports them. So people have got to wake up and realize this is coming. If Trump signs a red flag bill... Trump has to know it will destroy him. He'll be done. He'll be, his goose will be cooked. So what type of his, uh, advice and, is he getting? So will our goose be cooked. Well, he is like literally creeping around the edge of disaster. He's getting horrible legal advice. As we pointed out the other day with Dr. Vieira, he's getting bad legal advice about his declaration of emergency. He's getting horrible legal advice about red flag bills. And so we're working on both those fronts to try to put some good advice in his hands of what he should be doing. Because like you, you said, we, we got Tom Papert taking over and doing a great job. Let's do a 60-second break and finish up. He's your constitutional lawyer in your own right from, from Yale. He worked for Ron Paul. Looking at this, if he did it as commander-in-chief, he's open, he's clear, he's covered. But doing it through the 78 law allows him to play games. Let's yeah. discuss it all straight ahead. Then Tom Pappard takes over. Then the war room with Owen Schroyer. I haven't heard from Roger Stone yet. He got gagged yesterday. We'll see what's happening there as well. The big news is it's exclusive. Jeffrey Smollett is being investigated for wire fraud with a fake letter they say he did. But the bigger news is the feds, and we'll see because it's a mixed bag of Democrats and Republicans, are investigating him for being directed by higher-ups to boost the whole show's value. Obviously, that's the, really the big takeaway. Mm. And the big city Chicago machine. Now, we're going to have Tom Pappert at Real Get Trump, or Real GE Trump. He also uh, heads up the uh, Trump God Emperor uh, website and, and, of course, manages the TV station uh, that we're on. He's going to be taking over here in just a minute. Uh, but, Stuart, you were finishing up with the whole red flag laws and national gun confiscation plan. The Democrats now incredibly uh, have come out and said, oh, we'll have our own emergency and take your guns. Yeah, and you got Republicans signing on to it. And like I said earlier, you also have people inside the Bush administration, or the uh, Trump administration, giving him terrible legal advice. Which are from the Trump, the, the former Bush administration. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so you got Barr, a rehashed Bush uh, guy, another neocon coming in who openly advocates for red flag bills. And back then he... You know, magazine capacity bans, assault weapons bans. He's an anti-gunner, and yet he's a new attorney general. So Trump has him in his ear right now. And you've got Rubio, and you got Graham, and other Republicans calling for a national red flag bill. A national red flag will, bill will be the mechanism for their control and chilling of your speech. 
People on the conservative right own guns. They will use that to do what China's doing now. If you don't get in line and don't say the right things and stay in your box and stay in line, they're going to take your guns away and will chill the speech of millions of gun owners across the country. And it will be a ticking time bomb because every time you go to bed, you won't know if that's your night to have a SWAT team coming to your house. And they'll use it against you. The left will use it against so you. So oh, obviously they're going to, then as you said, SWAT everybody, yep. dox everybody. So this is their new level of harassment. Don't just take your bank account. Don't just put up you know signs in your yard that you're a Nazi, the equivalent of burning you know, crosses in your yard if you're black. Yep. No, no, the, 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 the Democrats have the same old tactics. They're just moving on to new ways to implement them. They're going to SWAT you. And I'll start with the veterans first. Any veteran has gone to the VA... Um, about being depressed or having PTSD will be instantly on a list. They'll go down that list and say, this guy's danger to the community. And the Democrats have their operatives everywhere. They'll leak those to their own people and move forward with it. Absolutely. That's what's going to happen. So we have to stop a red flag bill. If let Trump know that if you, if you touch this, it's the third rail. It's the real third rail. You touch this, you're done. He has to know Think that. how incredibly restrained nationalist Christians, conservatives have been. So far, right. What about Smollett? Then we're going to turn this over to Pappard. Smollett is the most disingenuous fake person I've ever seen. Everything he's done is blown up in their face. And still Don Lemon and uh, others will not, not, not throw him overboard. Again, that just signals that the sources I have are right. This was all done at higher level direction. Yeah, it wasn't because he was... He was concerned about his salary. I, I believe he's a political operative of the Democratic Party, and this was all intended to further their agenda to demonize this country and smear the president and all his followers as being racist. And he was trying to incite a race war. I agree with Mike Adams. I think that's what was the possible outcome. It was very dangerous. And so I'm glad to see the feds go after him on, on, on a wire fraud, and I think they should use that as a mechanism to expand it. In fact, I think Trump should just appoint a special counsel of his own, like Mueller on the other side, and go and, and dig and find out exactly what his connections were and how high up they go. Why would he be so dumb as to pay the guys to write the letter <laughs> and pay him to go to the hardware store and then have the cops show up 40 minutes later with a noose around your neck, crying with symmetrical, barely cat scratches on your cheeks? I mean, this was just ridiculously fake. He thinks we're that dumb because we've been asleep. He yeah. takes our sleeping as our as our acumen. And he also took for granted that the Chicago PD, he did not realize they were going to actually do their jobs, which they did. They did a pretty good job tracking down what really happened. I think that caught him by surprise and his string pullers. Did you see Lemon? I mean, I played this before, but Lemon saying it's not his fault. This was planned bad and executed bad. He says... The, 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 whoever was handling this screwed up. It's not his fault. Lemon is on TV <laughs> admitting he was ordered to do this. Well, he was kind of a patsy, right? I mean, you can kind of feel sorry for him. He's a low, lower level patsy as far as intelligence goes. He is. But who's really behind it? Well, so why did they not give him a better job? Like, hey, uh, here's a box of masks and use these guys. But again, it just shows how cheap the left always does things. Yeah, well, it's a little bit of hubris. I think I think he did. He underestimated the Chicago PD. He thought they truly had them all locked up in their back pocket. There would be a, a show investigation, and, and to their credit, they actually did a real investigation. But now it gets higher up, a slap on the wrist, disorderly conduct. Well, that's, that's I didn't like that when I first saw that, but I guess they've also tacked on a charge for uh, for a false police report as well. But they need to go beyond that. I think the mail fraud is the right way to go. As we talked about yesterday, there was a, a Chicago lawyer called in on the show when Owen was on and talked about how his concern is is that the prosecutors, the, the rank-and-file prosecutors, like the rank-and-file cops, want to go after this guy, but he's concerned that they'll get an order from above from their higher-ups to leave him alone or be nice to him. <laughs> I don't see how Smollett did this without help, and I'm not involved in the investigation, but the word is they're looking at the people above them at Empire and obviously getting it greenlighted in Chicago that I guess they just thought this would go over this way and no one would dare challenge it. I think the establishment's misgaging the atmosphere. Well, it's also like you said earlier. It's also part of their kind of their ethos. They they are all on on team demonization, you know, team project racism. So they all all want to demonize this country. They're all following the same playbook. It's kind of like being a communist back in the fifties and sixties. They're all following you know the edicts of the Comintern, the National Comintern, International Comintern. Um, but they all did it in their own, in own particular way. So even if there's not a direct connection, he's still part of that overall plan. And that's their strength, but it's also their weakness because we can look at their blueprint. And go okay. This was and like they literally follow like robots. Yep. Yeah. It's 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 the exact same thing. If you're a Trump supporter, you're, you're white. You must be white. You can't be anything else. Um, or if you're if you're not white, then you're a race traitor. But you're all racist. You're all fascist. 
you're all oppressed. Which is to keep minorities from buying into the American dream. We're okay. saying, oh, you're not allowed to have this. You wanted to get here because fragments were still left, but you can't have it. Yeah, which is failing. Which is why they want to bring in people they believe will be more amenable to their to their agenda and condition them to hate this country. But that might fail, too. We'll see. All right, great job. Thank you, Stuart Rhodes. Thank you. All right, Tom Papper takes over. I didn't plug last hour. I'm barely plugging this hour. We're going to go bankrupt because of me. It's all my fault. <laughs> I plug every segment. We make the money we need. I plug, like, once every two hours. The best protein bars, the best energy drinks, the best fish oil, the best uh, colloidal silver, the best iodine, the best products, the best coffee. Just sign up for auto ship on stuff that you need to reorder like toothpaste and the iodine and the uh, protein bars and get 10% off and know each month you're funding us. Thank you all for the support. InfoWarsStore.com is the blanket site. InfoWarsLife.com is the sub site. Uh, again, some of these promos don't have uh, any, any reviews yet because they just came out, but all the others have five-star reviews. InfoWarsLife.com or AAA 253 3139 Tom Papper takes over. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show's fourth hour. I am Tom Pappert, guest hosting for Alex Jones. Big thank you to Alex and the InfoWars team for giving me this opportunity, giving me the platform. I want to keep going where Alex left off, talking about Justy Smollett and talking about some of this big tech fascism that we've got going on, because I think they really go hand in hand. I mean, Alex revealed today on the show that he has sources indicating that top Republicans, top Department of Justice officials, top FBI officials are investigating. Smollett. We already knew that the FBI and U.S. Postal Service are investigating Smollett because of alleged mail fraud. He sent the phony uh, hate-filled letter that had MAGA at the return address to himself, allegedly. But I think that the reason Smollett thought he was going to get away with this is because Democrats in general are operating under a different paradigm. They think it's still 1995 and they control the narrative and nobody's going to ask questions. And of course, the Chicago Police Department did a fantastic job uh, getting to the bottom of this as quickly as they did. But I do wonder if it wasn't for the Internet, if it wasn't for people like Alex Jones and InfoWars and all of the Info Warriors out there hammering, 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 saying this doesn't seem right. This seems Seems fake. This seems like it's not the whole story. Would the Chicago police have been so willing to pursue it with such vigor? I'm not so sure. So I think that Smollett and his handlers, if he has any, I think that they were hoping desperately that Americans were still asleep, that Americans were still stupid. And that's just not true. But the thing is, they want us to be. And that's why they're going after us online. That's why they're going after our bank accounts, our PayPal account. We just had one of our writers at BigLeaguePolitics.com, Luke Rolfing, was banned from PayPal. This guy uses PayPal to buy books. He uses PayPal to pay his family back. He uses PayPal for just mundane things. But now he's gone. There's no explanation as to why. And it just it lines up so well with what's happening with Chase Bank, terminating anybody who even slightly likes Trump or even slightly likes the Proud Boys. You're no longer allowed to be a Chase Bank. It goes right hand in hand with Facebook. Luke is no longer allowed on Facebook. He's no longer allowed on Google. It's a miracle he's still allowed on Twitter. And you see, if they get rid of everybody out there who is going to raise up their hand and say something about this Smollett thing doesn't add up, if they can get rid of everybody willing to question authority, willing to question the mainstream media narrative, then they just might be successful in pulling off the next hate hoax. Because if this hate hoax had been successful, it is the perfect story for Democrats. Oh, all Trump supporters are hate-filled, evil people with, with demons in their hearts, and they just go around lynching people at 2 in the morning, and they're homophobic, and they're racist, and they hate TV, apparently. Everything bad would have been confirmed, and that's why they hopped on it so quickly. That's that's why we saw Kamala Harris say that it's a modern day lynching. And we saw Cory Booker, who allegedly is implicated now. We saw Cory Booker going out and saying we need anti-lynching laws in this country. I thought murder was already illegal, but I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Apparently not for Democrats. But they would have been successful if not for the – not mainstream media, the alternative media, patriots all across the country and the world raising their hand and saying that this doesn't look right. So it'll be exciting to see if we can force the envelope on this, make them go a little bit further, make them admit that, yes, this was a massive hoax. And of course, 
Jesse, does anybody know if we're saying his name right, by the way? Is it supposed to be Juicy Smollett? I don't know. You look at the rest of his brothers and sisters' names, and they all have very fascinating names, to say the least. But Jesse Smollett has now been written off the rest of this season of Empire. So it's nice to see that he has some consequences. We all remember just, it seems like a few months ago now, but I guess it was longer, when Roseanne Barr lost her own TV show that was named after her because of a supposedly racist tweet she sent while under medication. But Smollett, yesterday, it was reported he was back on the Empire set, and now reports today indicate that, yes, that's true. He went back on set, and he had been crying, and he was groveling and saying, you guys have to believe me, I swear to God, I didn't do this. I guess he and his maker are gonna have a long discussion when he gets to the pearly gates, I don't know about that claim. but. He looked like he was going to get off scot-free. And again, we had a brilliant example of the alternative media coming together. I saw articles on InfoWars, Gateway Pundit. Obviously, we wrote one at BigLeaguePolitics.com saying, wait a minute, you're going to fire this cultural icon, Roseanne, for a tweet. But Smollett, who, if this is proven true did one of the biggest hate hoaxes in modern history. He smeared 60 million Americans, Trump supporters, as vile, horrific, demonic people. And not only that, the people of Chicago are rather annoyed, and rightfully so. Chicago is a liberal uh, sanctuary. It is a uh, utopia for them. uh, Chicago is everything that Democrats want. You have gun control. You have Democrats in office for 60 or more years. Obviously, the violent crime rate is through the roof. You know, they call it Chirac uh, because it actually mirrors the crime rates of Chirac, but they consider themselves to be enlightened liberals there. And so for Smollett to go in and say that, well, this was all just MAGA evil men in Chicago at 2 a.m., it really kind of slandered the entire town. So it's nice to see him get a little bit of consequences. Let's read from this a little bit. This was at BigLeaguePolitics.com earlier today. Hate crime hoaxer Jesse Smollett will not appear in the last two episodes of Empire this season. And it's important to point out, Smollett's bail was $100,000. That's what he gets paid for one episode of Empire. So a lot of people are sitting there saying, is the judge drunk? How on earth does he think that a $100,000 bail is anything to a essential Hollywood actor? Just because he's in Chicago, he's still a Hollywood actor. I mean, he was arrested in 2007 and pled no contest for driving with a DUI, lying to the police, and driving with a suspended license while in Los Angeles, trying to further his acting career. So again, it's nice to see him get some consequences. I honestly thought he was going to get by Scott free because that seems to be the pattern with Democrats. You look at Hillary Clinton, you look at all these other names, you look at Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who hired the two complete uh, hacker losers. All of these people get by without any type of consequences. But Smollett, it looks like he is not going to be in the rest of the season and they're debating whether or not they even want to have him back on the show at all, which again, I don't know who watches Empire. I'm guessing that's a Democrat friendly audience in the first place because I had never heard of it before Smollett came about. But just look at what happened to Roseanne. If they don't make the right decision, if they don't can this guy, you're going to get the Roseanne treatment. It went from getting the best ratings, some of the best TV ratings for a sitcom in modern history to being now it's the Connors. You know, they murdered Roseanne. They had her overdose on prescription painkillers. And now it's the Connors. And it gets maybe half of the audience if they're lucky. If they're lucky, they can get half the audience. So before we go to break, we're running out of time at this segment. I want to remind everybody, go to InfoWarsStore.com. Go buy the products. They are a wonderful, wonderful help. If you just look at me, you know, six months ago, eight months ago, when I was down in Austin sitting next to Alex Jones, I was about 70 pounds heavier. And a lot of it, I really credit Alpha Power and I credit Super Male Vitality, even though that's surely about to run dry by now. I think that it made the big difference. I think it gave me the energy I need to get up here after working all day to go back and do another show on God Emperor Trump on Facebook here in a few hours. So please, please, please buy the products. We in this world need your support because we're being squeezed down of banks. We're being squeezed down of payment processors. We're being squeezed off the face of the earth. Anything they can do to drive us down, they're going to do it. And it is so important that we're here because the next Smollett might just get by with the hate hoax if we're not. You're watching The Alex Jones Show's Fourth Hour. I am Tom Papper. We'll be back in just a couple minutes with more news of the day. Thank you so much for watching. 
You are back on the Alex Jones Show's fourth hour. I am Tom Pappard, guest hosting for Alex. Big thanks again to everybody at InfoWars for giving me this platform to talk today. Now, we were talking in the last segment about how tech fascism is trying to squeeze out all alternative voices, all independent voices, only mainstream people allowed. And that does include the likes of Daily Wire and others who are pushed forward, Glenn Beck, who are pushed forward as the token conservatives. But I want to talk about these ideologically motivated companies. Uh, Chase Bank, you know, their logo looks like it's a Nazi swastika. I, I don't know why they're allowed to do that. You know, you post a swastika on Facebook, even if you're saying, yay, we beat the Nazis, you get banned for 30 days. But Chase Bank can apparently have a swastika in their logo and it's no big deal. But, you know, we've also been talking about PayPal. And, of course, Chase has been a big topic on the show. But PayPal today is just – they're really rubbing me the wrong way for what they're doing. You know, it used to be owned by Peter Tile, a generally intelligent, erudite uh, – I he left the Trump administration about a year and a half ago. But, you know, generally a pretty good person from all accounts. And now they're banning reporters – who expose them allowing fundraising for illegal immigration caravans. This is up at BigLeaguePolitics.com. PayPal banned Big League Politics reporter Luke Rolfing from its platform mere months after he exposed the online payment processor's funding of an illegal immigration group that provided services to those that encourage illegal immigration. And essentially what Luke found out was that PayPal, which, you know, you, Laura Loomer can't use it because she's a Nazi. She's a Jewish Nazi. That's a new thing now, if you didn't know. You know, uh, the Proud Boys can't use it because they're a hate group. They're a fraternal society of men. That is now hate. Men is hate. But if you are uh, Pueblos sin fronteras, people without borders, then you can use it to fund migrant caravans coming into the United States. That is what PayPal is being used for. Big League Politics first discovered this in May of last year when some of the first caravans were making their arduous march in <laughs> – I say arduous. You know, They all had trucks. They all had vans. They seemed to have air conditioning. Nobody died. They were all wearing uh, the bare minimum of clothing. It was a little bit confusing, those caravans. But – We've now seen maybe why they had some of that stuff, and it's because PayPal was allowing them to collect funds using their platform. We've reached out to PayPal. We never heard a response. In fact, it was Luke who did the original article. Luke then did a follow-up article just four months ago saying, yep, PayPal's still at it. And the very first communication he had from PayPal was simply telling him that his account was gone, that he could no longer use it. And in their explanation of why Luke lost his account. They said it was because of the activities he did, the activities that he did using the account, you know, like paying for dinner, you know, like buying books. That is apparently bad activities when it comes to Amazon now. He actually got one of their people in their chat support system to respond to him. And she, he said, well, what made you decide to do this? Did the SPLC go yell at you and say that you need to ban me because I'm a reporter? And this is how she responded. For more details regarding the why, in all caps, of this action that PayPal took regarding your account, you may submit a subpoena to our corporate office. She's literally saying, if you want to know why you're not allowed to do business with what, what, what is essentially an online bank, if you want to know why that is, you're going to have to sue us. And so Luke, uh, Luke has friends. Luke has been a journalist for a few years now, so he's made some connections. And he said, fine, we'll see you in court. I'll tell my lawyer to do exactly that. So it will be interesting to see how this goes. But I find it, again, fascinating that the only way we get a response is when they shut us down. When we ask them, how come you're endorsing illegal immigration? How come you are letting people contribute to lawlessness? How come you are defying President Trump? How come you are defying the law? Crickets. Only when they ban us do we actually have a back and forth conversation with PayPal. And, you know, as somebody who has an online website, and I know Alex Jones has been through this with InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, it is a bit terrifying to think of PayPal going away. And you look at 1776.shop where you can get the Roger Stone did nothing wrong shirt. You look at InfoWarsStore.com and you can see that more payment processors are coming out. And I'm hoping, you know, this may be a little bit naive of me because look what they did with Gab. They started going after their domain registrar and they started going after their hosting provider. And they go after this and they go after that and they get them out of the app store just like they did with the Alex Jones InfoWars official app. 
You're just not allowed to be part of their system. But there are payment processors coming out that are now Patriot friendly. And that does give me a little bit of peace of mind. But this is why it's so important to go to the stores to if you like me, go support me. If you like Alex, go support Alex because they are squeezing us out. People have been seeing PayPal as the go to safe way to pay for over a decade now, I imagine. And now suddenly it's being removed from websites. It's being People are told they can no longer collect donations using PayPal. It's a bit scary. It's a bit scary for those of us who are kind of small businesses doing this. But of course, it's not just PayPal. Chase Bank, you all saw Martina Marcota on the show earlier today with Alex, I'm sure. But she joins Proud Boys chairman Enrique Tario being banned off the platform. And of course, Enrique has, uh, he's also the individual who runs 1776 uh, shop. So he does not need PayPal, <laughs> let, let it be known. But this is absolute financial fascism from a company that has a swastika as its logo, a lot of people say. I don't know. It looks kind of like one to me. Well, let's just read a little bit from our article that we have up here at bigleaguepolitics.com. Conservative commentator and former burlesque dancer Martina Marcota has joined an elite list of Trump supporters who have had their Chase bank accounts shut down in recent weeks. This includes Proud Boys chairman Enrique Dario and Trump supporting Army veteran, former InfoWars veteran, I might add as well, Joe Biggs, who had their Chase bank accounts shut down in recent weeks weeks. You know, I, I know that it's a little bit of a cliche at this point to say, you know, Democrats are the real Nazis, but it's absolutely 200% true. What do you think was going on in 1939? They made it impossible for everybody that they didn't like, from Jews to gypsies to gays. They made it impossible for them to engage in commerce. They made it impossible for them to rent. That's why they had to live in ghettos. This is the totalitarian fascist playbook, and we're seeing it a little bit different this time. You know, the one good thing about the Nazis is you kill Hitler and they're gone. You invade and they're gone. And of course, I would never recommend violence in a million years. I don't think that that is how we get out of this because this is different. This is Kafkaesque because it's not the government that's putting its boot down on our neck. It's these bigger than government corporations. It's these bigger than government banks that have half the government paid off. They get to do whatever they want with no repercussions. And it's really, you know, you go and you try to appeal something. If it's the government, you know what channels to go through. Even a totalitarian government, you know what channels to go through to get your PayPal account, uh, to get a little bit of a, hey, what happened here? An explanation. You have to sue them. They openly invite you to sue them. I'm sure it's the same with Chase Bank. If you want to get some answers as to why your Chase Bank account is no longer allowed to exist, the only option is quite literally a lawsuit. And the average person doesn't have the money for this. You know, on the Internet, a lot of people like to say, well, then sue them, get a lawyer and sue them. You're talking tens or possibly hundreds of thousand dollars to get any type of response from this stuff. It is, frankly, a bit fascinating. You can see right there on screen, Alex Jones is part of this, and he is suing PayPal. And I can only imagine the legal costs associated with all this. And again, I hate to plug so much for Alex, but he says he doesn't do it. So maybe the guest hosts have to do it for him. That is why we need your support because we're not allowed to make money. The only way we can make money is if you go to infowarsstore.com or if you go to my website, or if you go to, if you like Gavin McGinnis, if you like the Proud Boys, go to 1776.shop, even though of course Gavin is no longer affiliated with the Proud Boys. Very important distinction there. So this is the fourth hour of The Alex Jones Show. I'm Tom Pappert, filling in for Alex today. Thanks again to everybody for giving me this opportunity. Thank you to watching, for watching, I should say. We will be back with one or two more segments right here on The Alex Jones Show. But again, please visit the websites. You share the links. Do everything you can to support this machine, because without it, who knows? Maybe Jesse Smollett would be working. Maybe Jesse Smollett wouldn't be facing charges. I don't want to live in that world. We'll be right back. This is The Alex Jones Show. I'm Tom Papper. 
Welcome back to the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. I am Tom Papper, guest hosting today. Facebook's got him for Trump. Now, we were talking in the last couple segments. We've been talking about empire. It's still the topic of the day. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you guys a little bit about what happens when you give the leftists some cognitive dissonance, when you break through their mental conditioning and let them see a glimpse of the truth. Apparently, it is complete chaos on the set of empire, or at least it was yesterday before they they finally decided to suspend, to suspend, I should say, Smollett. This is from Breitbart Nolte. Empire cast feel betrayed. Want Jesse Smollett fired. We've been told many of the Empire actors are bleeping furious and feel Fox honchos. If they don't fire Jesse, he should quit on his own because he doesn't deserve a spot on the show. Now, there are still people who are somehow still defending this guy, which is a little bit beyond me, and that is the absolute state of leftist conditioning. They refuse to believe the truth even when it's right in front of them. I mean, obviously, the case is still proceeding. By some miracle, Jesse could be innocent. Who the hell knows? I don't see that uh, happening in this timeline, but let's let's read just a little bit more here. The feelings from animosity stem from the fact that everyone on set had Jesse's back after the attack, in quotes. But in light of the new evidence police have laid out, many of them feel hurt and embarrassed. TMZ adds that almost everyone is worried about how Smollett's hate crime hoax will hurt the reputation of the show and how it could continue to do so if he remains part of the cast. Now, it is interesting to see the one thing that leftists have is a healthy interest in self-preservation. Many of them probably couldn't care less about the 60 million Americans who were smeared as racist, homophobic losers by Smollett. Many of them probably couldn't care less that Smollett essentially said that Chicago has this horrible racist problem. You know, the one thing Chicago doesn't have, gun violence, yes. Corruption, yes. But I really don't think they have a horrible, horrible racist problem in Chirac. But these actors are more interested in their own self-preservation, their career, their future. How's it going to impact me? What's going to happen to me because of Smollett's lies? Alleged lies, I suppose I should say. Smollett has already been cut, of course, from the last two remaining episodes of the season. That's $100,000 per episode. One must wonder if Smollett was counting on that money to pay his bail or not. Of course, a $100,000 bail you got out on a bond, which is 10% of that. So $10,000. What Smollett makes in a couple hours of working is what his current price of freedom is. I, I do wonder what that judge was thinking there. Maybe they don't realize how much Hollywood actors are paid. I don't know. And by the way, what an inflated number. <laughs> I, just coming from a TV background, KCTU TV5 is here in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, InfoWars affiliate, very proud to have a great signal down here. But what an inflated number. You know, if it wasn't for the dying media being propped up in so many different ways, there is no way they could afford to pay these actors this insane amount of money. But and, and again, I think that perhaps Sheriff Clark is dead on the target when he says that this couldn't have been about money because Smollett is at this point making one point eight million dollars per season. And the story that we're told by police is that he's not happy with that. He needs more money. That's that's not enough for him. He needs a little bit more. And so he does this hate hoax, allegedly. And I just find that hard to believe personally. How much money do you need? Maybe what he's doing is he's doing one of these leftist things of looking at one of his uh, better respected, more uh, uh, popular co-stars. And he's saying, why isn't that me? Why aren't I making that money? I would believe if that's the case. Uh, Jesse does seem the type. But uh, let's keep reading. According to a Thursday report, after being arrested and formally charged with a felony for filing a false report that afternoon, Smollett, who was out on bail, returned to the Empire set where he apologized for all the trouble and pleaded with everyone to believe he did not fabricate the hoax. He said this, I'm sorry, I've put you all through this and not answered my calls. I wanted to say I'm sorry, and you know me. I would never do this to you, your family. I swear to God, I did not do this. You know, the way those brothers rolled on him, I don't know, maybe Smollett is not a Christian, but... That is uh, not the time to swear to God when you have two witnesses, brothers, who – what is he accusing them of? That these two men of Nigerian descent, that they just blatantly lied to the police? Why would they do that? 
why would the why would the brothers do that? And Smollett is basically saying, you know, it's the brothers who put forward the narrative that they were paid thirty five hundred dollars by Smollett to do this crime. And that they would be paid another $500 after their impromptu vacation to Nigeria and Istanbul and elsewhere. And it is the phone records between Smollett and the brothers that the police are using to help connect the dots. It is the prior text messages exchange where Smollett allegedly bought Molly or ecstasy from the brothers. They were their, his drug dealers, allegedly. So what is Smollett saying here? That these guys are lying? That the phone records are just a coincidence? That the fact that they were extras on set and had a personal relationship with Smollett, it's all just a coincidence? And the fact that people on the Empire set believe this is truly astounding. Uh, by the way, Smollett, because he was being overwhelmed with phone calls from people asking him about this, he had actually turned off his number and got a new phone number. He was that uh, that busy trying to dodge people. And I all I do wonder, this is my own personal theory that's not grounded in anything, but did he think that if he got a new number, then police wouldn't be able to find some of the old data? I don't know. But it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the tension within Fox about how to handle Smollett, the article continues, is highlighted by the fact that the actor is well-liked among the network and studio brass. Well, maybe they should have paid him more. <laughs> that's apparently the reason for all of this. So in the last segment... We've got a few minutes left here on the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. In the last segment, we talked about big tech fascism squeezing out the little man. And it's not just big tech. This is the left's culture. This is what they do. They want us gone. They want us removed from not just public discourse, but if they could get their way, the face of the earth. And it's not just in America. In the United Kingdom, a student was kicked out of a university after branding halal meat, the type of meat that Muslims have to eat, as barbaric and inhumane. And if you don't know how halal meat is processed, is that the right word? Prepared, maybe? They butcher an animal while it is alive, not stunned, no type of sedation, no type of anything. They slit its throat and let the blood drain onto the ground. If PETA had any guts whatsoever, they wouldn't be releasing god-awful videos trying to convince Americans not to drink milk. They would be putting their entire budget into stopping halal slaughter. But no, that would be racist. That would be anti-diversity. So this kid has now been kicked out of university. He's 19 years old. He's a member of the UKIP party. He's now been kicked out of university until next September when the next uh, academic cycle starts. And the only way he can get back in September is if he goes to a diversity training class. This is the future of America, I think. This is where we're headed if we're not very, very careful and if we don't really start to push back in every nonviolent way we can. And – Further in the future, say another six months to a year beyond that, is what's happening in China. They have officially unrolled the new social credit scoring system in China, and Gateway Pundit posits, is America next? Now, they also add, uh, America already has a social credit score. Just ask Laura Loomer, whose unofficial social credit score led Chase Bank to cut ties with her, PayPal to cut ties with her, Facebook to cut ties with her, Twitter to cut ties with her. The only place you can still find Laura Loomer is on Instagram, which seems to be the forgotten one. I, I shouldn't probably say this because then they'll go find it and get him. I'm not even going to say it. But there are people who are banned from other platforms still on Instagram. We'll leave it there. And – the Chinese, because it's so hard to get people to parrot their fake news talking points and, and that are actual human breathing newsmen, they are actually creating NPCs, non-playable characters, to read their news. This is a bit of a comical article. We've got to go fast. We're running out of time here on the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. But hundreds of journalists reacted with indignation when well-wishers urged them to learn to code in response to a round of firings. Well, the Chinese have beat them to it. Not only do their journalists know how to code, their journalists have coded an AI journalist that will read the news for them. It's a fascinating development, and I do think, you know, Hey, you can program a program to lie. You can code this fake guy to lie. That's not difficult at all. 
<laughs> That's an easy thing to do. If we had more time, we might play that video. But we are running out of time here on the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. I want to say thanks to Alex and thanks to the InfoWars team once again for giving me the ability, the opportunity to co uh, guest host here on the fourth hour. My name is Tom Pappert. You can find me on Facebook, on the Facebook page, God Emperor Trump, on Twitter at Real G.E. Trump. And if you're in a big city, check the airwaves out. You might just get InfoWars on TV. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching. War Room up next with Owen Schroyer.